Great. Should adjust or change it for the graphic? Putting a big gamble, so we must do a lot of money. Yeah, we've changed that. Mm -hmm. right, well, good evening, community board members, staff, and members of the public, and welcome to this meeting of the Martinborough Community <coughs> Um So, we'll start with a bit of a health and safety briefing. So, the emergency exits for the town hall are clearly indicated. Um, if we need to evacuate the building, use any of the emergency exits and head towards Kansas Street and assemble in the playground area. Please remain at the assembly area until the building has been confirmed clear. Now, this meeting is being live streamed to Council's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded and subject to the recording being of suitable quality, will be made available on Council's YouTube channel via a link on Council's website. Um, so to start this evening, I would like to invite Angela Brown to come up and read her declaration as a new member of the Martin Brown Community Board. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, Angela Brown, declare that I will faithfully and impartially, and according to the best of my skill and judgment, execute and perform in the best interest of the South Wairata District, the powers, authorities, and duties vested in or imposed on me as a member of the Matabra Community Board by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987, or any other act. Right. <laughs> oh, I can't <laughs> 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 Here we go. Thank you very much for that, Angela. <laughs> now, did anyone have any extraordinary business that they wanted or needed to be added to the agenda? <laughs> Hey. Um, it's for, for apologies, I did receive an apology from um, the Mayor, Martin um, Connolly, that he couldn't attend tonight because he's attending um, the Featherston Community Board meeting. Um, does it, now, conflicts of interest, does anyone have any conflicts of interest to declare with regards to the items on the agenda? And um, does anyone have any acknowledgements or tributes that they would like to make? Um, yep, Aidan. Um, I've got a couple of uh, tributes. Um, uh, the first one is uh, the passing of John Donald, um, who was a long-standing member of, uh, of uh, not only the Warwick, uh, Martinborough community, but the South Warwick community as well. Um, he had been a, uh, an elected member on the Featherston community uh, county Council, which was, um, uh, I suppose, one of the predecessors of uh, the South Warwick District Council um, and had been um, involved with Featherston County Council uh, on rural, on, on a rural ward um, position for a number of years. He had also been uh, the advisor uh, to previous Martinborough Community Boards um, or the farm advisor for Payne Estate and had provided a lot of advice um, over a number of years on um, management of Payne Estate Food Council and also uh, the Martinborough Community Board. And the second tribute I'd like to um, uh, put forward is uh, to David Lawrence who passed um, uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, again another outstanding uh, involved in the Martinborough community. Dave was involved in the uh, Martinborough Lions here in Greytown for a number of years and was also instrumental in the establishment of um, of our new medical centre and was part of a trustee of, I think it was the Ruma Hunger Health Trust as well. So uh, passing both of those gentlemen um, have contributed a lot to our community. Mm. Over the year. Definitely. Um, I just have a couple too. I've... Um... Um, I'd like to um, acknowledge the passing of um, Wim Yulika, um who was, um, of course, you know, Yulika in it, um, and he was here, both, both him and his uh, wife Sue had, 
have are very very strong members of, 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 of various communities um a committee sorry here in here in martinborough um so that that that's quite a, quite a loss um and also um dawn hartnell um so our beautiful dawny um long long standing member of the community life member of mad Cats. <laughs> um yeah and our, and the mad Cats patron and um our songbird um so um she's started yeah, delivering yeah. meals on wheels to oldies and then only stopped a couple of years ago <laughs> and go most of them were younger than her. <laughs> that's because she lost their life oh nice. <laughs> So she's just such a special part of the community and and sorely missed. She was very sorely missed. So, yeah. um, I'd, I'd also like to know the passing of Charlie Hunt. Um, so um, Charlie and his wife, Nut, um, yeah, really uh, big members of this community for many, many years um, and actually used to, um, to co-own the dairy here at Kitchener's what used to be Kitchener's, so as you know, social hub in town and um, centre for raffles and <laughs> all things um, like that as well, so it already stood there. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, a big loss in pure for the Hunt family. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any? Um, anyone? I'd just like to also um, acknowledge the amazing new so we walk <laughs> uh, just um which has just opened today and um i'd like to thank those members from the library and for, from library services and from the martinborough friends of the library, library yeah. um who have uh, put years of work in um making our library a fantastic place and putting these ideas through that um give children a chance to be learning at the same time as being active i think that's absolutely wonderful and it was it was beautiful um, so it was it was lovely to go to the opening of that yeah yeah all right so um moving on to public participation we have one public participant tonight um which is Stuart. Um, Stuart, you'll have five minutes. Um, it is recommended that you speak for two to three minutes and leave a few minutes for questions. But Stuart, speaking to us all about lighting around the square. So, um, oh, yeah, sure. hi, Stuart. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Stuart Campbell. I think you know. <laughs> Stuart, could, would Stuart be able to get up? Yeah, actually, it, it might be better if you sit here that way. It's recorded. These are microphones, so they can start recording. <laughs> Right, I would first like to acknowledge the chair, thank you. Members of the committee, thank you for having me. Members of the council, thank you. Um, with the help of many community members, uh, a meeting was held last year in August uh, in the Waihinga Centre here regarding Innovating Streets Project um, and to hear what the community actually wanted in terms of you know, what they'd like to see in Memorial Square. From the action items from that meeting, um, I highlight two things that sorry, that pertain to tonight's community board meeting. One's improved lighting around the Memorial Square, and the other was improved street lighting in general. I have attached a full list of outcomes from that meeting at the back here. I apologize I didn't bring enough. I have sent an electronic copy to Aidan to redistribute. Apologies, yep. You got it? I'll see it now. You know, that's right. It was I sent it fairly late. So um, right, so the proposal being discussed tonight, put forward by Councillor um, Ellams for solar lighting is an excellent start to resolving the community's concern about lighting on the crossings around the square. I would like to reiterate though that the other concern raised was street lighting in all locations. While being mindful of the interests of the Dark Sky Society, we must also be mindful of the needs of Martinborough as a whole. We rely on tourism for much of our employment and commerce in this town, and it is essential for the visitors' well-being that they feel safe to walk to and from their homestays, wineries, restaurants, etc. Um, our locals also need to feel comfortable walking home from the rugby grounds after practice on a uh, weekend, uh, sorry, on a weeknight during winter, or from the bus, etc. At the moment, there is many, many dark spots. Um, 
Our current lighting standards may be reducing unwanted light pollution, but it has also created unwelcome dark spots and road safety hazards for those going about their business after sunset in the urban Martinborough area. I totally welcome the move tonight that's been discussed and I hope it gets, uh, gets some progress. Um, and, but I'm also sure that longer term, I'd like to see an increase in the frequency of confined lighting around Martinborough in general. This was an issue that came up by many, many people at the uh, meeting we held last, last year. And it was a full town hall meeting. So thank you. Any questions? Can, can I add some commentary to this? Because yeah. I've also pursued, and our agent has done as well, I've also pursued the general lighting, particularly pertaining to the pedestrian crossings, yes. but also looking at the square itself yep. and also the general street lighting, which I've had a number of concerns issued to me that there are too many dark spots. Yes. People don't feel that unsafe but they do feel slightly threatened. And so I've talked uh, unofficially to NZTA um, about the, what we can do around the pedestrian crossings. I've also talked to a couple of consultants in the transport industry to talk about what they can do with, with lighting. And if you like, I'd just like to mention a couple of things that they suggested. And, and the first, if you imagine from... Um, Waka Kotahi, NZTA's point of view. Maybe we, we, we might need to just aim for that. Or just we can just some public yeah. presentation because okay. we, we will be coming up to that. Um, can I just ask directly? Yeah. Sorry. When it says compliant light, well, what is that in the definition? What do you yeah, do you I believe. Yeah, okay. So I believe we have to have less than thirty-one ANSI lumens. Yeah. Uh, oh, color. Or is it Kelvin? Three one Kelvin. 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 Yeah, it's for the dark sky. Yeah. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> Call me silly, somewhere along the lines, I feel our pedestrian crossings have gotten um, degraded. When I was young, many years ago, there were always lights on every pedestrian crossing, even if it was just a... Uh, yeah, okay. When I first came to Martinborough... Beacon. Sorry? A Belisha Beacon. Yeah. There was always some kind of indicator there. There always used to be considerably more lights per power pole. I think now we're down to a ratio of one every four. Yeah. And I think, I suspect what's happened is that ratio was decreased and then the actual lighting standard was reduced, not in conjunction with each other. And the net result is we've got very poor lighting. If we had more low light, that would probably solve the problem and help fill in the dark spots. So when we do refer to compliance, we're referring to compliance with the dark skies? The, the SWDC uh, took on board a dark sky Provision. I don't know the ins and outs of that. Link, Stephen might. That guy had presented, though. I think they, someone, a representative spoke at the at that, that meeting that we had here at the town hall about the innovating streets when the safety thing yeah, was the, coming up. And this, they said it does, does not prioritise safety is prioritised over yeah. any of their requirements. Exactly, okay. and that's good. But, uh, yeah, so, we need to take yeah. That. that's a point that we need to take up, and I'd so, like to see it improve. So there isn't a standard for public safety compliance vis-a-vis -vis lighting that we're not compliant with? That I cannot comment okay. on. I'd love to know where to look for that. It's essentially a, 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 a NGTA standard for mm -hmm. street lighting yeah. that would be adapted by... Adopted by the council? The council. They yeah. don't have to adopt it, but they could adopt it. Okay, so it's for the council. That's on that side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm sorry. No, no, and, and Tim Langley came and spoke and said that he has done the work around the crossing and that they are not compliant. Right. At that stand. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so he, he did come and speak to the previous community. Oh, it's our last meeting. Yeah. Did anyone have any more questions while we've got Stuart here at the table? To, um, for Stuart? No, but thank you very much for your presentation. If I can just ask the question. So, so you can come <laughs> Testing is the light in the in the square itself, or just the pedestrian crossings. At the meeting, lighting in the square was raised, but especially lighting around the square pedestrian because it's really if you at night, oh, look, I, I, I know. you exit on Cambridge Street heading that way, no one will see you uh, yeah. until you're on the bonnet. Yeah. So yeah, I have one extra copy of my presentation. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think. I'd like to take that one. Yeah, you take that one. I'm all. 
Thank you very much for your time. Yes, right. Okay, I'll take my leave. Thank you very much. We're just about to talk about it. Actions from here. Did you talk about it? So, so are there any actions then from the public participation that we need to? Um, anyone? Yeah, I think so. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear more from Sean now than with regard to what you're saying for So, look, what I've looked into generally, and I, look, I agree entirely, our pedestrian crossings are deficient, yes. way, way too deficient, particularly the Cambridge Road one, um, more so than any, but all of them are deficient. So, I've talked to the authorities about, and unofficially, I haven't gone into a big question of, or official discussions with them. But we have talked about it. One of the things I said was, you know, we can do things like uh, control the speed, uh, which is a, a something to consider, and they can also raise the profile of the pedestrian crossings. And when they talked us, they said, you need to perhaps think in a longer-term holistic view to say, what are you going to do with speeds around the, the, the township and what you're going to do with pedestrian crossings so that the treatment <laughs> becomes common and the speed becomes common. Mm. So the, the things the things we looked at, uh, and I, I had a conversation today with one of the consultants, and and the Cambridge one is one I focused on particularly, and and certain things we can do um, is is the the, the lighting we can do. Uh, you mentioned the Belisha beacon, which was the old fashioned flashing globe. Mm. Um, it's it's now also available in a Belisha beacon disc now. I used to work with 3M, so we supplied all these Belisha discs now, which are the orange reflective. Yeah. And they're all designed for drivers because they don't mean anything to a pedestrian walking into them. So they're designed to illuminate the crossing for the driver, as is the stripes around the poles. But there is also a Belisha beacon disc, which is the combination of both. So it's a, a housing which has an illumination internal and it also flashes. Um, and that can be used at night when it turns on, so it's always flashing. So it gives attention to the driver that we're hitting a pedestrian cross. Um, now, it doesn't help the pedestrian to be seen. Uh, it, it alerts the driver. And the thing we have to consider is whether we're protecting the pedestrians, okay. the key function of the pedestrian crossing, and so we need to illuminate. So the lighting is particularly important uh, that they need to come into the pedestrian crossing to be seen. So the other thing they suggested in terms of what we could look at, uh, and again, these are going to happen over a period of time if you take up the plan. Um, for example, just take the Cambridge Road uh, intersection. Um, do what we call in, in entering a township called a threshold, and that is you narrow the road. By narrowing the road, you also slow the speed. People are conscious of the speed mm -hmm. and they see that. So you could do that by stepping from the memorial uh, square side maybe extending something like shoulders. garden shoulders so out, maybe to one and a half or two spaces of the pedestrian striping so that the pedestrian has the ability to step onto the crossing without actually getting involved in confrontation with the traffic. And you do that on both sides. And when you, when you then have, if you have some sort of lighting above, they will be e more easily seen by traffic approaching. But you're giving the pedestrian some sort of comfort that they're not stepping out to the zone. Now, I've nearly been knocked over twice during the day on that Cambridge Road crossing. And it's because people, I'm not sure what their actions are, but one of them was jabbering on a phone, the other was just inattentive. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing you can't do anything. So there is other suggestions that I, I could put forward that may be the same as uh, the lighting, but you can make the things active. So by making them active, um, there are LEDs you can put in front of the pedestrian crossing and you can link that to a camera system set up that as soon as a pedestrian comes within the frame, they light up the LEDs. Um, How much of it? Yeah, I, well, I haven't done a full copy of these because you've got to consider the options before you go into the mm -hmm. The same thing you could do with, with the Belisha Beacon disc, you could illuminate that to activate as somebody comes into it. Now, in history, I'd say that the LED systems have um, had a, a, a life expectancy was a bit lower than what we'd ex you'd ex expect from those sorts of things. Now it has improved, um, but I got involved in these actions with the um, 
terrace tunnel where they started to use those, not so much in an active sense, but in a driving sense, because they were looking at switching lanes and creating those sort of activities. So along with the, um, the um, solar powered posts, you can do these other options. And it's something we need to think about in terms of what are we gonna do across the whole area and say, we should be introducing something that is common and that people can recognize. Now, one of the things that um, I observe here, and it's like any community, the, the biggest offenders uh, in a community with speed are locals. They become blase about the drive. And if you look coming in um, from the outskirts through Jellicoe, Jellicoe presents you with a big wide open street. It has two 70K zones, which nobody, it's very rarely that they observe it. And there's nothing to slow the drivers down because they're going into big wide streets. So you need to do this threshold treatments to give them the fact that they, when they go into a narrow space, they will start to slow down. Not always, but they will start to slow down. So you've got to just treat those. So the, the, the thing I'm suggesting is that we should have a holistic plan to say, what are we going to do? Because we're not going to be able to do everything in the next five minutes, but we've got to think ourselves. And so if we're going to do something, make sure it's something that akins itself to our long-term plan, not something we do now and in two years' time we decide it wasn't good enough and change it. The other thing you can do is also get involved in this where you might get some commercial support is to say we would like to trial something. Um, you don't have to do an official trial because you go through NGTA with an official trial, it'll take you five years to get very little. Um, excuse me, just, <laughs> they do take time to do these things and I can understand that. that. But, but you may get... Uh, something from a commercial activity where you could try something from a local perspective and say we want to trial this. So I'm talking about the LEDs or maybe the deletion beacon yeah. or maybe even the um, the solar powered lines. We could try those sort of things and just on a trial basis to make sure that what we're actually doing is achieving what we set out to do. Yeah. Is there is there money in the budget for any of this? Well, this is something from my perspective. That, that, that yeah. They will be through council. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean community board in general, but in the long term plans and things, when you is the money aside for improved street lighting and things? Yes. Stephen, yeah. Stephen, Stephen, are you able to? Do we have any money available today? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to plan for it. The, um, the fact that. Uh, many of our pedestrian crossings aren't compliant in terms of lighting. Has is not council, and we've we've um, presented to this board on that in the past. It's something that we want to rectify, um, but it, but the um, that needs to be put into a program of work and costed into your annual plan if you you want to attack it in the next financial year uh, or into um, the long-term plan that perhaps is part of a holistic approach that's been suggested by um, the member. Can I just add one, one other thing, talking to the Business Association, um, they would like us to consider pedestrian pedestrianisation of some of, some of the streets. Um, now that presents itself with some issues. Yeah. But it's something you want to think about if you're talking about things in a holistic plan. If you do a pedestrianisation, what's the shape going to be? That's, and this is this is part of so the spatial plan, which has been going on for some time, yep. with um, consultation being available from the public. Um, I think it's great to hear these ideas now, but it's really good. And this is where we need to, as a community board, be going out, making sure that these people that have these wonderful ideas come and tell at the time when things are being done. Because afterwards, when things are set in stone, it's really hard to change that. Yep. So that's where we really need to keep the engagement going. Yeah, Aidan? Uh, through you, Chair, thanks. Um, and um, certainly those ideas and that experience and background that you brought mm. um, from your previous uh, life, <laughs> there's a hell of a lot of information there. Um, and that's... Um, but sort of going back and a bit, doing a bit of history, I mean, Stuart's given us a bit of background about um, public concerns from, from last year. Um, earlier in this year, uh, Mel and I met with Stefan and, and Tim to discuss road safety issues around Martinborough. Now, Tim uh, Langley, the roading manager, told us at that time that he had applied uh, to Wakakotahi for funding to upgrade all the pedestrian crossings, and I don't know whether that was specifically within Martinborough, 
but I think that he told us the subject or the top or the, sorry, the amount is four hundred thousand, and um and unfortunately he did not receive that funding from Waka Kotahi to go ahead with that project. Um, but um, I'm just wondering as to whether so uh, with with the subject being brought up again, I've um, and, and you'll see in my uh, board members' report um, that I've spoken with. Um, Greg Carter from Poltec, and he's supplied a cost of um, approximately thirty thousand dollars, excluding GST, for the installation of two uh, seven metre high poles with uh, solar lights um, to cover two pedestrian crossings. Now, I haven't, and, and and those lights, he said, will be compliant, dark sky compliant. Um, but yet I haven't received any other detail as to uh, the specifications or um, but it, it was just a, a, a ballpark figure and that was including installation, excavation and, and labour. Um, but um, Sorry, Aidan, that's what it went? So that was just in, initially for two poles yeah. and two lights. Um, we decided. To, uh, yeah, and, and, and I didn't say... Can we do all four corners around the square? Or, but I just said, you know, <laughs> give us a, a ballpark figure. Okay. And that's what he's come up with. Oh, um, so, uh, Stormy, you talked about speed. Well, there, there is a speed management plan uh, that's in progress, well, will be in progress. And Stefan spoke to us at an infrastructure meeting uh, today okay. that there will be consultation mm. in the new year. With uh, council, community boards, and the and, and the wider community, mm -hmm. with speed limits around uh, the South Waipa as well as within towns, that factor or, or that portion come into play. Particularly as well with about when we're talking about people being able to move by foot, by by vehicle, by Bicycle. wheelchair, by wheelchair, yeah, by mobility yeah. centre around the town, we're wanting to, I mean, potentially we might need to look at what that might look like around some of the streets for a trial or something. Yeah, I think we do get used to the fact that the lights are dimmer just yep. just when we live here. Yep. But from a point of someone who deals with visitors a lot from to here, I often get asked, people come in to report to me that your lights are not working properly mm. because they said, oh, they're not switching on properly, they're only on half. Yeah. And, and they come and tell me in the eyesight. And and everyone, the people who have commented on it said we never feel unsafe, like physically frightened we might cockle over or fall off the pavement or a car can't see us. No one's ever frightened about and they're you know, they're they're Yeah, but it has been reported to me quite, quite a few times that they think the lights are not switched on. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. This is, um, but we can definitely, do we have any actions for the, that we want to ask of the writing? information or anything or should, should we just put this as something that we definitely look to discuss again and um, hang on maybe maybe, maybe this kind of ties in to Aidan's report, report as well we can just should we move his member report to include it now so then that way it can all be tied in together yeah is that possible yeah somebody to move that we move um Move Aidan's member report um, to be discussed now. I okay, thank you, Storm. And um, a second. That's just thank you very much, Karen. Okay, that's great. So, um, Aidan, did you, Aiden, did you have, um, would you like to speak to, to this? Well, I've um, Spoken brief, yeah, I've spoken briefly, and 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 all the detail in my report is is in my report there. I'm also aware that that Karen has done some digging as well, um, and and uh, to establish um, some an, another option, um, but certainly it's um certainly you know it's been discussed around the Matabara community board table for the last two years or the last. Triennium, and I think and longer, and, like, and longer. Yeah. No, yeah, it was already on there when you first came out. Man. And so, I mean, I there's sufficient. Um, I think there's sufficient support within the community for this uh, issue to be 
uh, escalated. And you know, if if as a council we're unable to find or fund four hundred thousand to make all of our pedestrian crossings within the community compliant, I think it would be great if we could make a start on uh -huh. perhaps some of the you know some of those pedestrian crossings and 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 ones which have been identified as you know locally as as greater risk yeah. because then the community will get to see that action has been taken but then we can also communicate with the community that there is a cost um issue and uh and if we can put something uh with you know through a process long-term process uh oh, sorry annual plan process to the end stage making the rest of those pedestrian yeah. crossings safe in the next you know, years, yeah. year or so, uh, that would be great. Just in that respect, would, would we advise them as a, as a trial? I'm, I'm suggesting if we trial something, communicate that to the community that we're having a trial and we'd like the feedback, and that's the one thing you do, you attract their commentary mm -hmm. as to whether that trial is a good one or whether the, the solution is a good one. Yeah. Um, but we should be announcing the fact we're going to do some sort of trial work or something like that. Yeah, uh, is it possible, Stephen, to do a trial of something? <laughs> well, I think if I understand you correctly, the, the suggestion is to place two solar-powered lights in the proximity to the pedestrian crossing of the square and, and um, at a cost of approximately 30000 plus GST for the unit and the installation, and you'd, and you'd be asking council, asking the community if that is um, desirable and canvassing views, and, and if you got a supportive answer, you'd then ask council to fund it. Um, council has in the infrastructure committee to, um, if they were willing to fund that trial, I don't see any problem with that. There, there's there would be a procedure you'd have to run through. Um, obviously, new infrastructure on the square is, is prohibited. So you know, under the RMP, so you'd have to you know you'd have to run a process around the RMP um, as part of your consultation. So that's resource resource management. But not reserve management. Yeah, you know, reserve management. Thank you. You're not left with any new. On the square to protect the, the, you know, the integrity and the yeah. appearance of the square, but that's not a it's that's not a, that's not a big issue. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I suppose I was wondering about the possibility of solar powered because therefore you weren't going to be needing to dig down and trench and you know yeah. get access to all the power mm -hmm. cables yeah. that are already in place. Uh, I mean, I, you know, it sounds like it sounds like a sensible plan of action. Me. Um, the thing I don't know is if, uh, because street lighting and pedestrian crossings is a big issue right across the, um, the township and, and in other wards as well. So we're under pressure to act on that. Yeah. I don't know if councillors would decide to actually uh, put street lighting into the work program, pedestrian street lighting into the work program, because there's a lot of people around the schools. As well, that want you know want lights on the school pedestrian crossings, and at the same time we're reducing the speeds to at least thirty k. It could be lower than thirty k after consultation. Yeah. I don't know whether you know where that's going. So because if that was the intention, you might find that you know in a fairly short space of time uh, you'd have national standards. Lighting installed at the pedestrian crossing as part of that program of work, but you know. Um, so, so ra rather, uh, so so, uh, can we just speed up that work? Is there a way to speed up that work so that we're not doubling up or putting in something that's no. Really, no, because no, we don't know what we don't know, and it hasn't gone through yet. So, okay. it would be nice if that happened. But do we wait? Oh, yeah. And what happens that doesn't happen? Amazing, so, I mean, be, to be able to possibly do a trial, I think, would probably be quite good just to be able to see how how it works, how the community feel about it. You know, I think, which, on, honestly, it, it's really interesting because normally I just get hit all the time about footpaths and, like, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's probably the main thing that people always talk about is footpaths. Um, <laughs> 
and yet the pedestrian crossings throughout Martin Borough have become almost the number one thing that the community are talking about because of because they're really serious near Mifflin. And I know it's like it's like, but we haven't had an accident yet. No. Do we want to wait for that? People, the drivers are terrified. Mm. The the kids are terrified on these scooters. The the you know like because yeah. but they don't they don't they, people can see them and yeah. and and it's just really really difficult. Everyone's you know when the movies are on and people are coming across the the um one on the corner of Jellico and oh, um gosh. yeah gosh. and Venice Street. Oh, oh man, like you know you just can't see the kids half the time on there because there's cars parked and you, you, cars parked. you can't even see them. So. You know, it's um, it's how do we work with that in the evening? In the evenings, yeah, yeah, it's on no space in between to be able to actually see. Yeah, and they're all going to get fish and chips. The big thing with the schools is that the schools have a real big push for um, getting the kids moving, um, and they are constantly doing things: get on your bike, get on, yeah. get on your feet, get on your scooter, get on, you know, but get moving in a way that you are not in a vehicle or with your parents <laughs> quite often. <laughs> you know, like yeah. often it's, it's, it's teaching your kids skills yeah. so that they can go out um, and do these things. So it's got to be safe. It's it's yeah. a big issue. It's, it's a big, the pedestrian yeah. crossings, yeah, yeah, it's been particularly with the um, main pedestrian crossings for the school, are on the heavy traffic bypass. So that's, a, that's another um, big issue. Um, around ensuring the sight and visibility of kids, not during school hours, but outside those hours when they've been playing in the school grounds yeah. and they go to cross or go across. So they don't have the And it's time for the pools to open, which, yeah, the get some of the one, which is really, really exciting. But again, it's right there where it's a heavy traffic bypass. So, you know, that awareness, I guess. On the topic of the costumes, I'd be interested um, to know, because I, I did a bit of an exercise um, Kay and the Mayor actually flipped to me a case study for Kaunga Ora on the North Shore. Quite a big housing development. They use some solar-powered street lighting. So I actually I got actual quotes for what they used there. That was fairly recently, October 2018. For that for the fittings themselves, it seems quite a bit cheaper than what Gray was talking about. But he's probably factored in. There's probably a few things I'm missing in the actual installation and patching up the footpaths. But that looks to be. It looks promising that it could be a bit cheaper, quite I'm, a bit cheaper. I'm just wondering as to whether perhaps uh, the information that you've got there and the information that I've gained from Gray, perhaps we could, I don't know, can we do this formally then, yeah. put that together and then perhaps have a chat with, with, uh, with, uh, with see what his information had been or yeah. previously in pricing. And, and perhaps if well, I, ran, uh, I ran that number past him, he said it sounds about right. Mm. But, but certainly the council the council management be stakeholder for you early on. Oh, yeah. um, and early on, just in case there's any impediments that I can't you know, think of right now that Tim will be able to think of. So it will be an important um, organisation for you to refer to. Because yeah. it's great, you know, like, I mean, I, I, I just like the idea of having a trial. Let's give it a go and, and see, see and as you say, it's an opening point for people to discuss it more as well. Once we've got to have the community try and say anything when they don't know because they haven't seen it. So, like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I mean, they might tell us that they think it looks ugly, you know. Yeah, yeah. that is, yeah. But, 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 but yeah. 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 yeah, it's like, but when you were thinking it looked ugly, did you get across the road safely? Oh. <laughs> 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 They're not things of great beauty with their TV panel, with pets, but. As you say, if it's going to save people's lives. And if it's and the, the thing me. I like as well, my solar panel, is it, it automatically faces down anyway because it's top, top up. That's when you're yeah. catching the, so it's facing downwards, which that means it's actually it's putting less light up. This, this, up, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Way. this yeah. fitting confirms that it is the world's first international dark sky approved solar lighting product. Oh, yeah. well done. Definitely want to have a look at that. That's a tech thing. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get to it. So, get all of that information together and uh, take but, um, put information from the council. You will share yeah. that through with well, and well, already on our action plans, or oh, sorry, action 
item list mm -hmm. from our previous community board. These discussions there about lighting within the square mm -hmm. and around the square on pedestrian crossings. Yeah. So, how do we be the best way forward, Katie? To so the the, the community board would um, put a proposal together um, and and put it cover all. Yeah. Um, as I said, the control early with us to make sure that there's no um, derailers mm -hmm. and then consult widely with the community to make sure they don't think they're ugly and they're gonna they're gonna say no. It's um, amazing. You can do a workshop, a workshop on it. Kind of thing. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna say that kind of thing. <laughs> um, you make uh, you present that paper to council and ask them to act. Mm, okay. All right. Well, so um, following the meeting, maybe we'll get some um, have a talk about some dates, and right. we can maybe get together and it's workshop that outside meeting. Okay. okay. Great. Um, Aidan, just you could move you on forward. We will continue around the sea oh. trees and Bungaroo Park. Okay, we can jump to that if you wish. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and I suppose there has been over the last year um, some concerns within the Martin Borough community about um, Hungarua Park, which is the park full of oak trees situated directly behind uh, Fori Kaka uh, Rest Home. Um, there has been uh, some talk and concern within the community that um, uh, Fori Kaka may have uh, been wanting to extend uh, into Fora, into Tangaroa Park uh, so they access that land to build some more villas. Um, and then looking at, and, and because of the, I suppose, the value to the community of, of that park and all those established oak trees, um, a couple of people had had a look at the council's notable tree register and found that the oak trees in that park are not listed on the council's notable tree register at all. Now I've gone had a count and, and counted in these thirty-two uh, oak trees um, in that in, in the park, um, and I've discussed uh, the notable tree register with James uh, Witham, who is a planning officer who uh, carries responsibility for that uh, notable tree register. And he has suggested that um, for any, or provide information to say that any tree that is placed on that register then uh, before it's placed is assessed by uh, council's arborist. And um, against a series of measures, I can't remember what the program is called, but yeah, if, if, if the tree meets all of those um, targets or markers on that program, well, then it's placed onto the register. Does it have to be a certain age? I don't know. It said it had to be a certain age and it had to be healthy and there's mm. other requirements on it. So um, yeah. they had a read of it. I don't know how old they are. Yeah. No? yeah. They're old. They're old. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, and, uh, and, and James said that because uh, council has... They'd be over 50 years. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering if it's when, you know, are they the same as the oak thing here that... People got from Sue, you know, the are they the same? They're not. Are they the same? Because I know that they have a few planted around Martinborough. They're not, they're older than that. You're quite sure that I'm I'm sure they're not Himalayan. No. They're not the probably English Island. Just be good to kind of know because um yeah, I guess I guess the age of them and and what's the status of the park? It's, no, it's 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 land owned by council. Right. I don't I don't think and I haven't seen anything that says that it's designated as a park or as a reserve. It's it's land owned by council. So it's vulnerable. And I don't know what the process is to have land uh, labelled as a park or as a reserve. Yeah, I just don't know. But I suppose James, our planning officer, would know that process. But he was saying that um, not so long ago, 
South Warwick had council did go through the process and the add a whole lot of trees onto the notable tree list, mm -hmm. but for some reason these ones weren't. Um, for under... some reason, no one bought them. Okay, like, I, like, no I can tell them. you right yeah. now. Yeah. No, no, and no, it was never brought to the table as, as, as pick up these, you know, like look at these trees. So there certainly are trees in Martin Bro that are on the list, like the trees mm. within the square trees in concert. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. right. And I still remember, uh, must have been my first year on council, and the guy went, went through and, and, and checked them, you know, like 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 to see how healthy and, and everything. All those checks had to be done on the on the tree. So, yeah. So it is so because council has already gone through that process. Not so long ago, they there, there hasn't been uh, this current this current year there has not been a program or any finance mm. provided for further trees to be assessed mm. to be added to the list as part of the combined district plan. Marston District Council and Carden District Council are going through that process within their own territorial areas, yeah. but because count the South Warwick Council had done it not so long ago, there wasn't a need. So James suggested that um, that perhaps the community board would be mm. the avenue uh, to escalate um, having those trees assessed and added to the register, and suggested that a resolution be passed and so, so and and also a submission added from by the Martinborough Community Board to the combined district plan, and their submissions. I think are closing on the fifth or sixth of December. Yeah, yeah, year. really soon, really soon, uh, like in a couple that, of days. And that submission will need to ask that those that the tree oak trees within the Hungara Park be assessed and listed on the notable tree register. Can mm -hmm. we do it that fast, Katie? <laughs> Can we put together something just to say, like a letter or recommendation to recommend that? Do you want the, me to write the submission? The, the oak trees. Uh, is that what you're thinking? Yes. Probably, uh, I mean, no. best practice would be for Wanna. someone on the community board to write the submission mm -hmm. um, and then to uh, <laughs> resolve at a meeting yeah. to submit. Um, but that obviously doesn't work with the time frame. So mm. I would say if you made a resolution now to make a submission, someone wrote it and got it okay via right. email okay. by the board, mm. that would be sufficient. Okay, okay. So oh. does it need to be more than what's in this for the submission? Um, what does the submission? Oh, okay. That could be a template. Okay, you're going to give me a template if you pass a resolution now that you want to move us, then uh, the names for a template and just look at it ASAP. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So I'd like to move that. Second. Edinburgh Community Board. Yep. Provided. That's a resolution. <laughs> Fastest thing we've ever done. I think of that. Edinburgh Community Board. Pass the resolution to make a submission to the combined district plan. Asking at the oak trees are kind of pipe register. Yeah. On the notable tree register. Um, if I have a mover, then. Um, mover. Well, Aiden, I have a mover. Move so, um, one second. One second. Okay. Um, so all those in favour? Aye. Okay. <laughs> the motion is carried. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the good work. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's on there as well. Um, yeah, yeah, it's the bottom of the member report. Um, so it would be community, community board minutes. So, are there any corrections um, to section F and G of the minutes of the first meeting of the triennium? Um, F and G. Anyone have any? The nomination. No. Well, um, yes. Is there a lot? That's good. Okay. That we accept this. Oh, has that already been done? Yeah. 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 So so no, no. I'm moving. Yeah, I'm moving. You'll move that. You can change the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Right. Right. A true great record. Thank you, Councillor Maynard. Um, do I have a seconder? I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you, May. <laughs> <laughs> um, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Well, that includes the rights. Oh, no, no, that's just the community board minutes. Oh, just the community board minutes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hi. So, um, so is everyone? 
We're still back around the three minutes. I hope with the minutes. I think we all agree. I wasn't, I wasn't there. So. No, no, no. I, 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 okay, so then we're moving on to um, reports from the Chief Executive and staff. The first one being the adoption of the 2023 schedule of ordinary meetings. I have a mover to receive the adoption of 2023 meetings. Oh, no, Thank you, Councillor Maynard. Do I have a seconder? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Yep. Even the motion is carried. Do members have any questions about this report? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll see. Does anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, I thought it was the community board. <laughs> So um, my question is, I, I noticed, so I'm a member of the Molly Standing Committee as well. And one of the things that they said would work really well for them is, is having a kind of where you have your meeting. And then the following one would be kind of like a forum where you can discuss and, 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 and other things a little bit like having a, a workshop, but where you have it where it's supported by council. Um, and I see that this has been set out in a similar fashion for the Marnborough Community Board and I think that that would be a grave mistake and that this should be you need to meet at a proper meeting every six weeks otherwise you're only meeting every 12 weeks to be able to move and, and, and as a proper meeting so to actually get things done that's my thoughts. All right. okay. yeah. um, originally Originally, they were saying, no, no, I think the key thing is, can we make decisions in these forums? Mm. No, 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 okay. Well, I thought they made a statement that was good. No, they said we I, I can speak to this a little bit because I was part of um, no, the team you. that came up with this civil ordinary meetings. Um, so we've had some feedback, like you said, Councillor Maynard, from the Mari Standing Committee. Mm. Um, also, the Great Town Community Board had decided that they wanted to sort of take a uh, more formal, less formal approach where they had some opportunities to engage with the community. So last night they adopted um, that schedule as well. Um, obviously it's it's for the board to consider and um, adopt their meeting schedule. Um, I believe Featherston is meeting tonight and also was looking for something a little bit more similar to that. Um, I think that the formal meetings um, from their perspectives would be for decision making and that quarterly meetings would have enough opportunity to provide that avenue. Um, and they were using the meetings in between um, to engage with the community, consult with the community, um, work on different projects, um, do workshops, um, meet at different locations. I think sort of the opportunities that they saw for those were um, outweighed the formal meetings of receiving reports. Um, again, no decisions can be made at those meetings, um, and there's nothing to say that you need to make a decision um, that aligns with the other boards. Um, so it's definitely for consideration, um, but that is just sort of the thinking behind the proposed schedule. One of the underscore, sorry, that the, because uh, the mayor kind of talked to us about this idea. Yeah, and, and I understood that the forums were more not for engaging with the community, but for more for our community board, for example, to to discuss ideas amongst ourselves, perhaps a little bit more informally, but I, in a quite directed that. way, like not just. Yeah. I got a different thing from speaking to Martin. I thought he said it like having I mean, always bringing bringing members of the public in and actually using it as an opportunity that would either be us or it's like discussing street lighting and you bring people into it and everything else too. Yeah. Well, if I may, um, yeah. so just wanted to clarify, um, Mayor Connolly is not a member of the community board. You are a separate entity yeah, yeah. and make your own decisions about your mission. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, idea that, that he would mm -hmm. think that's all. Mm -hmm. I realise that we don't have to adopt it, but yeah. he yeah. might most of it. Yeah. I think it's difficult for new members to know because we don't know what it was like when it was six weeks. I did speak to a previous community board member when I was thinking of standing for community board who did say how important he felt it was that we had six weekly meetings, especially when you've got new members, because you need the continuity and the ability to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So if a member of the public talks to you about something, you're not saying, can you wait three months, because yes. then I can actually get yeah. 
It's too long. It's too long. We look like we're not doing anything. Mm. And I guess public participation as well can be there's different every single six weeks, like in those meetings. That, so, so you still have that ability to have public participation. You still have the ability to have people come and speak to you from any business that has any concerns um, or that you have concerns, you know, like so someone from infrastructure or someone from, you know, you know where, where there are those concerns, that there is still the availability for them to be able to do it. The difference is you can make decisions. Mm. Yeah. That's how I. That's how I. I look at this, and I think you know. I. I but for, I, I. I would be be very concerned. And the other thing, there is nothing stopping the Martinborough Community Board from having a meeting at the Pirinoa Hall. There is nothing stopping the Martinborough Community Board from going out to Kahitara if they wanted yeah. to. So 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 you can have your meetings. They do not have to every single meeting be here you can go out if you feel that that's where the engagement needs to be done. Um, we gave that a go when Lisa uh, Cornelson was the chair um, and uh, put in what massive engagement. Like, like there was actually a really good amount of people that came considering that there's not a lot that actually live out there. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, you know, you know we, we, we had about eight and nine people come, which was cool, you know, like that's really good um, out there. It, it wasn't, it necessarily it didn't happen as much at the other places so so we ended up kind of going it's a really good exercise and we've been out there so 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 it, it's may, maybe that you only just go to a couple of year yeah different places a year so yeah you might go teach marine you might go you know it's a native, uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or so, comes up. so that way they know who you are and, and you guys used to just be in the um wahanga center and give a meet the community board yeah. You know, those are opportunities for engagement as well in between you having your meetings. Yeah. At least you can say, I'll bring this up at the next meeting. But you I'll bring it up very much time. time. Have a workshop with yeah. you guys, like, like to meet and, and discuss like, like, like the lighting, the lighting mm -hmm. um, to do the trial. And it doesn't have to, you know, so that way when you come back in the next six weeks, you're moving forward. You're ready to move forward. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, uh, I mean, the, there's a strong, strong case for keeping it at six weekly, and we, we new people rely on you guys because you know how important that was. I think, I think one of the things that happened in the last triennium, um, that didn't so much happen for the other two towns, I think, was that we had really urgent things that popped up that needed to be that were being discussed in our community that needed movement and, and they needed action. They needed the Martinborough community board making decisions mm -hmm. um, and then following those decisions through to the council table, which is actually would be my question is just where we sit here, when, oh, sorry, here, <laughs> when, when that, um, oh, yeah, when, which that. council meeting is our, our recommendations and things which really so meetings. So it would be the one to follow. This is still a draft schedule. We haven't yeah. um, completed the council and committees schedule yet. That will be available on the 14th of December uh, for the meeting. So in theory, the idea would be for the Mari Standing Committee to meet and then the community boards followed by the committees and then council. Although yeah. um, I will note that I'm not sure if that will be possible, um, depending on how, how, yeah, yeah. How um, um, can, can, uh, the, the other thing that I, I was just concerned with um, in the last triennium um, was the fact that the Martinborough Community Board meetings were always the last ones held before the council and never got to the council table in time to go through. They were always follow back another month, like 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 until the next another council meetings, mm -hmm. you know. Um, is this giving is where this is sitting? So if they're having the meeting on the 9th and the council meeting is on the twenty second of, of February, for example, I think we're looking at next year. Yeah, is that enough time? So that way, mm -hmm. they they are being seen after the community board meeting, and they're not having to wait for another seven weeks before they can actually discuss what was the something weeks prior, you know, because it's really, uh, uh, that that became quite difficult trying to go back when you just had a meeting about the next thing, but it wasn't in the council. Yeah, so it looks like the Martinborough Community Board is meeting two weeks before the proposed mm -hmm. council meeting, although mm -hmm. 
council hasn't adopted their schedule yet. Mm -hmm. um, we're also working with a large number of committees to try and fit into there as well, um, and trying to resource right now sort of governance support for what this could look like with quite a busy schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so in theory, yes, there should be enough time for recommendations in two weeks to get to council. Um, although, I mean, I was going to say, the other meetings coming through. On the agency, I guess. Yeah, from, yeah. But, well, yeah. Do what we can. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Katie. That's good. Because it was that was that was my big question too. Just uh, mm -hmm. where we're going to be? Because there is a space in all council meetings for each of the community boards to actually present mm -hmm. and speak. At, but but it's very difficult to speak when you've had a meeting two days ago that's actually moved on some of the things that's just making it to the council table. Um, uh, yeah, that, that that became a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. just where the space was. Um, and it's not through, you know, like, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it was through any, any fault, but we just want to make sure that where the, the is fit this time, the momentum. That, that, that you're not put in that same position because that's unfair for the Martinborough Community Board when it wasn't happening to the others and it happened every oh. council meeting. Yeah. So, so, so did they adopt a similar plan? What would that be then? Mm -hmm. Did they adopt a similar plan last year? Or? No, 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 no. But what happened was um, a initiative was yeah, trialed for eight weeks by, to move to eight week so meetings yeah. for so the count. That two weeks, you didn't have it anymore. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't adopt that schedule at the, the time. We had a lot of issues. Eight at six. Yeah, and the other community boards and the and the council eight. eight weeks meeting schedule. I know this. Were they? I don't know what happened, but then in the next, um, the, when everybody got put back to six weeks, when the Martinborough Community Board meeting the was others, just a couple of days yeah, before the council, it was just a couple of days yeah. 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 meeting, so just, and so we just couldn't. Just yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it wasn't left around me. Well, that's why I say I'm not. I'm. I'm literally not throwing stones or anything. No, no. But when you have a look at these schedules, when you decide on what you want to do. All of these things really have to be taken into consideration, which is why I'm raising them right now. With are you, are you happy with the schedule you see there in terms of have we got enough time to get meetings? Yeah, yeah. Well, but that's why I wanted you to have a think about: do you want it? Do you want it as a meetings, six week meetings, or do you want this forums? Um, um, yeah, yeah. That's why. Uh, that's why I also asked: is it enough time, enough space between? I would support them turning into meetings. I think we. Would, mm. It's the guidance we would need. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, we'd accept that guidance. Yeah, mm. fantastic. Yeah. Mm. I would. Um, I think uh, for um, the Martinborough Community Board over the last three years, the, the community board was really engaged with the Martinborough community, and. Um, and we, Mel, had arranged for a sign so that for the drop-in. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday mornings, once a month, beginning of the month, we put the sign out in front of the Waikinga Centre. And you know, for two or three hours, we sat in here so that members of the community could come and speak to them. Beers and guns. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hit them out. No. So we had that sort of engagement. It's quite nice. It was quite nice. It was good. That's what it is. So we're out and talking to people. It didn't, yeah, it wasn't with religiously every every month, but it was when we did it that we had a good um <laughs> response. It was right through to COVID. It was COVID that sort of put the yeah, yeah, it did. and certainly looking at the other and talking to the other members of, of the other community boards across the district, their engage the engagement that they had with their community, while they did have engagement, it probably wasn't and they were probably a wee bit jealous about the engagement that the Martinborough community board had with people. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think, and that was, so I think, you know, that was really great because as a community board, you know, matters. That's what you need to do. And discussed and, yep. and, and escalated to council. And it gets so much better if you get them straight to you. So, so we want to speak to, and it's not people talking amongst themselves. It's going to, something's going to happen from it. Hmm. And I think and so, as a, yeah. as a councillor for the Martinborough Ward, like, Having that understanding of, of just how big the water is, the Martin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. It is huge, and and it's compelling. Yeah. Yeah. If you like, you know, well, compared to the other, two and a half. To the other two. Yeah. So, so across the whole South Warwick district, the area is two and a half thousand square kilometres, of which Martin Borough has the largest. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Land mass. Yeah. And we've got a number of communities. We've got our community but, account, a number of. 
real and, and this is where for me the Martinbury Community Board is so so important because uh, you know being able to have that time to uh, to go and, and talk to you know engage with the communities um, you know um, uh, to be able to have that additional yeah I think it's because when I, I one of the things I'd said was that you know I'd like to reinstate that because I I spoke to yeah. you guys when you were there yeah. about issues yeah. and, and and I remember having a conversation with Storm and saying perhaps we could go out to Landgale Cafe and do it one week yeah. or do it in different places or like ferry at the pub or something and just people see us and big flag travel yeah, yeah. we well, we talking about bad so, sorry when, when those informal uh, meetings not the not the full meeting here, but the Saturday morning. Oh, the Saturday morning, yeah. Yeah. Did you call upon associations to come along, or oh. you treat them slightly differently? How is it? Just, just put in the. It's just the. Oh, yeah, it's put in yeah, that yeah, thing yeah, and yeah. be there and yeah. come on in and see us. So, yeah. so how would we talk to some of the community associations? Do you, do you treat that through the formal process here, or or, or we can we can just take, get in touch and, 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 and you know when's your next meeting? Well, you know, can we come and speak to you at your next meeting? Because that's, that's yeah. one of the things that I'm looking at doing is talking to the business association and, and say when they have meetings, I'm happy to turn up to the meetings and talk about any issues they may have, so we get a voice coming back with support. Yeah, they're pretty good at coming to us. They come to you. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. they're real good at coming, coming to the yeah. panel. Probably, probably every second month, the business association will yeah. get to speak at public participation about an, a, about a, a campaign or something like that they're yeah. yeah. thinking of you know, doing in uh, the future and, and want, wanting to advise us or ask for support on each one. Yeah. So this is maybe slightly left field. Yeah, one thing that's that. coming up, is the events and the safety plans uh, yes. and events have been cancelled because the safety plans are writing plans out of this world in terms of scope. Oh, okay. Anyway, is that the expense of the national? No, no, but I, I know, but, it, but the, the, there is, I'm sure there's another way around that we can adopt a local, but it takes the council to bite the bullet on it in terms of doing things. And and that, this is national roading, I think. You're talking about the cycling and stuff because that's the safety plan. And also, they've got cancelled, right? Because because the new parade and things like that. The Christmas parades. We're talking about like traffic yeah. management yeah. plans. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah. no I, I mean, for. Um, Sorry. I'm... Um, no, because I... that, that's easy enough because the council looks after that. Like, so the council actually. You know, you can take take to them and and find out what it is. You know, like what what's needed, yeah. what they can do to help to make it happen. Because Martinborough is actually the only one that doesn't uh, isn't on a main highway. Yeah. So so actually, the Martinborough plan isn't, which is why MACAP had been able to do it for years. Yeah, no, right? but, but no. you can't do it. The traffic management plan yeah. has changed. Yeah, it's, it's changed change. because you have to close State yeah. Highway at the back. 53 at Ohio Street. So it falls up because otherwise cars can't divert around yep. to go around wherever they need to go. New rule in chain. So, uh, so Shane said, and it was going to actually cost $2,000 for the new. Yeah. That's, that's Shane Cater. Yeah. The we had a meeting with him to discuss it. Okay. Okay. So, so the, the Business Association and Mayor kept putting something together for Christmas. Oh, awesome. yeah, yeah. And the community board are going to wondering. dress up and be the, be the judges. Yeah. <laughs> just wondering. I mean, I just, um, yeah. No, sorry, sorry. Just wanted to bring this back into. Mm. Um, so we're going to make a decision on that. You were wanting to talk yep. about Aidan? Yep. 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 Right. I was going to say that they were all good, good ideas and valid points. We're just wondering, Storm, if we could perhaps discuss them on another. Yeah. 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 Sure, sure, sure. Let's do this. Yeah. And so it's a little bit theological. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was. <laughs> oh, well, um, so do we need to vote on the schedule? So yeah. I then have a mover to adopt the 2023 meeting schedule of council committees and community boards. Subject to forums being scheduled as formal meetings. Oh, subject to forums being scheduled as... So, so with the, if the forums are swapped for scheduled, scheduled, meeting. scheduled meetings, is that every six weeks? Is that back to six weeks? Yeah. Yeah. That's on six weeks. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I think that's... Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So I would propose that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and that we um delegate so so yeah six thirty p.m. meeting time for meetings on a Thursday. Um, Is everyone having a six thirty? 
Yep, up here with six notes. Eh? Yeah, I'll have tea at seven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about fish and chip for the bank. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that we three delegates that should have thought about that before you the authority to alter the schedule of ordinary meetings following consultation with the chair. I just realised it's Thursdays on here. It's Wednesday tonight. I thought we'd move them to Wednesdays. I kept with Thursdays. Sorry, I just realised. You know they're on Thursday nights. Because tonight's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. The tonight was the only meeting that it we was still on Wednesday. Wednesday. It's not on the Tuesday. So, so the first... Part of, no, it's not on the schedule tonight. It's Wednesday. It's not on the schedule. Can you do Tuesdays? I can do Tuesdays. It's just Thursday, Thursday is balls and that's a really good way to meet a lot of members of the community and talk about things. <laughs> it's Tuesdays. So, Tuesdays yeah. day. um, I'm going to have to go back and, and yep. look at the calendar. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, all I'm saying is that there's, on the seventh, there's wire at the committee. Oh, what's this, what's the yeah, point? so there's potentially seven committees that need to go in there um, as well. So plus a lot of the combined um, and external committees. So well, I guess Wednesday don't really work for me. Yeah. So, so I think I mean, if it was Thursday later, I, I probably can get here, but half past six will be pushing it to get here. That's all. It's during the summer months because we obviously don't play balls in winter. Yeah. Well, there's, that's, so, so that's one of. Um, if you know, if it was six o'clock to five, or, or seven o'clock, seven, seven o'clock. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll finish the course by six. Do, do, do you want it to be seven? It doesn't have to on be a Thursday. It can be make it on a Thursday, and then I, then I'll just come after, after balls because it's not every it's easy. It's just a great way of you meet so many different people at balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 have your dinner. Yeah, yeah. you have the bell. We get down first. Yeah, seven, seven would be better. And, and would, yeah, so would that work a bit better? Yeah, at seven? Yep, so the same dates that are outlined yeah. in the schedule. Yeah, at seven. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. So that we adopt the 2023 meeting schedule of council committees and community boards with the change to the forums becoming standard meetings um, at a time of 7 p.m. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, and delegate to the chief executive of the authority to alter the schedule of ordinary meetings following consultation with the chair. Thank you, Councillor Maynard. Do I have a seconder? Second. Oh, thank you very much, Chancellor. All those in favour, raise your hand. Oh, the motion is carried. Yeah. Now we'll move on to the establishment <laughs> and appointments to committee. Okay, do I have a mover to receive the establishment of appointments to committee's report? Thank you, Aidan. Um, and do I have a seconder? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, Councilman. Hey, all those in favour? Okay, and the motion is carried. Uh, the members, were there any questions about this report? Uh, uh, chair, please. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Is the, the great, Malibu Greater and Wastewater Treat, is that the one that you're on? Yes. Okay, just checking because it might make sense. You should stay home, then. Yeah, well, I would say yes. You sorry, sorry. I would actually, I would actually like to remain as the wastewater champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, go you. Yeah. <laughs> we were armrests for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Okay. So, um, and then. So then do we have uh, two, so we'll have two representatives for the Constantine Park user group? I will put one day for that. Yeah, yep, right. Oh, so, okay. I wouldn't mind being from the two tours. Yeah, okay, great. Right. We need to more wait for the photo tours. Oh, no. No, no. It's fine. Go. And no, I need to make me say. Yeah, Karen wants to go, but it's anything to so oh, the west. I'll sub it. Yeah. <laughs> Be a sign of the boundaries, yeah. <laughs> uh, excellent. Oh, okay. Um, and I'll second so, those. Can we just... appointments? Thank you. <laughs> um, you see, have they already been moved? No, you need no. I need a mover to appoint myself as a representative <laughs> to <laughs> the <laughs> and um, to appoint Storm Robertson and Angela as representatives of the Content Packers Group. Yes. Thank you very much, Aidan. And um, now, do, right. do, can we just talk quickly before we move on? Oh, oh sorry. All those in favour, please. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. And the motion is carried. 
I just want to have a little bit of a talk with you guys about the appointment um, around a student representative. So what happened was um, one of the one of the board members was actually able to um, they they knew of a, a youth representative that they were able to bring um, to the table. Oh, right. Yeah, nominated to the table. So uh, now. It means to, so, so a youth representative, what does that look like? Um, Alex is a great example. I mean, he was 14, but by the time it was finished, he was 17. So for, for a period of time when you're at college and when lots of stuff changes and you, mm -hmm. um, you know, so so it was actually, yeah, um, mm -hmm. quite, and, and really beneficial having that view. Yeah. Um, Just for things like this. The skate park or, or, um, or, 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 you know, the number of pump check. When things like that come up, Great too. I don't know about you, but it's been a long time since I've got a skateboard. And how did Alex come to be that person? Did you say? So oh, well, so, so, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, um, it's about who you know, who Thank you might know in right. the community, mm. like, like, and that you know, that might be like group. 13 or 14 years old because. It's for three years, so uh, you know. Yeah. I'm going. That last year is always hard for them because they normally got exams. But um, and you, which is which is fine. Obviously, we're pretty flexible <laughs> with them. Yeah. They don't have voting rights. No, that is it's for information that they um and input and input. Yeah, that they that they help us. How how is it perceived by the youth? Oh, oh, really good because yeah. so so for um because they they. They'll, they'll sit here like this in the meeting, yes. and then they go out and they actually ask the people that that Mates. we're we're wanting to hear from, yeah. and they'll feed it back to us. You know, like which is fantastic because that's actually what we want. And and um, yeah, like Alex kind of said something, and then it was like, okay, so we knew what to ask him in the meeting, so he could be kept. Yeah. You know, so so we don't scare them because it can be really scary. A lot of them Just a, a little bit, like not not scary, but you know. Yeah. You're a teenager, everything's scary. Mm. Yep. And um, and that's one of the things with you know, I mean, a young person can be someone in the early 20s, or <laughs> I guess, but but then you are moving outside of the yeah. that don't yeah. know, but what we really want is this really secondary school age. It's it's really it's a it is a really great um age to capture mm. because the young ones talk to them really easily. Yeah. Um and then they'll also be quite confident talking to um, their own peers as well. But, but have, would it be good to uh, have a ask around, like maybe like some new users of the library might they might know someone who would be a good candidate? Yeah, yeah. They might they might know someone that's you know yeah. Yeah. that that might be interested. I but uh, yeah I'm I can think of a few that I might approach. Or yeah. I can think of a few that I might approach and we can yeah. you know, like like have a discussion, just just even just an email thing prior to it happening. Because if, if we get a whole list of them, I mean, don't, don't want to start interviewing them and saying them away. Oh, oh, that's okay. You didn't meet the grade. <laughs> you know, like it's better. Yeah, yeah. And it is actually there's nothing worse that you go like, and you're, you're talking to them and they get all keen, and then there's like another four or five, and then you have to like look down. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but the connection with the youth would be awesome, especially for like you know. I mean, I've obviously got a little one, like you know, yes. a nana too. But yeah. there's that gap in the middle that that. We, I've got an idea. No. Ideas. You've got an idea. Well, why don't we leave you with your idea? Let's let's see if we can and that out. bring some um yeah a couple of nominees if anyone yeah yeah we'll okay. some to the table. Awesome. Alrighty. And then if everyone kind of agrees and if yeah. they agree, then maybe bring them to the next meeting. So is, is that okay. the time frame you want to get somebody on for the next meeting? Is that the the idea? Just, when is it? Yeah. The next meeting's not until next year, is it? No. Well, so is it gone? So, so I mean, yeah. I can pick them up. January 18th. Okay. So, yeah, that was everything. Yeah. So, we'll just move on now to the review of the regulatory policies report. This is page 22 of the. Uh, do I have a mover to receive the review of regulatory policy report? Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Thank you, Karen. Oh, yes. You did the news. I did. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> all those in favour, please. Right. Right. Yeah. Say aye. Um, all, all those against. Um, oh no, sorry, the motion was carried. Um, can we have an officer to speak to this report? Um, um, I think it's will be me. Um, I have a few notes. Apologies, I'm just starting to pick some of this work up, um, but I'll do my best. Uh, so currently there are um, four um, policies that are under review, uh, control of dogs policy and bylaw, dangerous and insanitary buildings policy, local Easter Sunday, Sunday shop trading policy, and local approved products, psychoactive substances policy. Um, so these are being reviewed in accordance with the legislative timeframes. Um, and this report is just to sort of give you a heads up that these are on our radar currently, um, and we're looking for um, any suggestions you might have um, to provide governance direction on key areas for considerations um, in the review of these policies. Um, and if there's any additional community interest groups or stakeholders uh, that we have missed in this report, uh, we don't need to sort of come up with answers at the moment, um, but if you wanted to provide some feedback um, via email, that would be very helpful. Um, yeah, I guess we're just sort of asking how we can best engage um, on these policies as they are um, under review. Mm -hmm. It's a note as well. So with the Easter Sunday trading, um, that, was a, that, that, that was quite diverse. I think so. Um, of course. Yeah, yeah, we should expect it. Yeah. It was a big thing to suddenly be put through to local government mm. from central government as well. Um and and yeah. Uh, but the work has it come to an end. It has worked very well. Oh, yeah. Um well enough that that I think uh was it uh Marcelin or Carterson that's just adopted it? Marcelin. Marcelin. But they are consulting. Oh they're consulting on it now on, on it now because ones that hadn't now can see you know that in a way it, it's been really hard we all know it's been very hard for small businesses over over the last few years yeah. and things like this actually uh, is a way of helping so yeah yeah that's right, so all i'm going to say that yeah because quite a lot of things that but i too have seen yeah, it's really good. It is. Yes. Oh, I, I think, yeah, I you think know, it is nice. It's been very beneficial. But yeah. it's got the one day of the year. You got a day off. Hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I, that I got to go to church. So I could actually. Oh, no. On that yeah, Sunday. yeah, yeah. And, and, and normally on Christmas Day, and that was it. But yeah, you know, like, I mean, yeah, that was why yeah. I didn't. No, but it's quite an important. It is quite an important then, for some people. Yeah, no. It has been. Fantastic. Good for uh, it up from the South yeah. Africa. It's been very much so. Especially for, you know, from the point of view of dealing with, with people, tourists and visitors coming in, they, they don't like it with things all closed up and, and it just makes it feel. But then it is hard for those people who pay, you know, time and a half, days in low. That's hard as well for a small retailer. So there is the other side to it. And then they pass it on as a surcharge and people come in and complain about the surcharges. Uh, it's like, well, you can't have it everywhere. Can't have it everywhere. Open. You can't have it everywhere. And, uh, and, uh, I do think overall it's good that they can trade. Yeah, it's good that they can trade. But yeah, yeah, I mean, let's just put it, just put it out there because I literally was one of the people that, oh, the people that, that actually, but I, <laughs> I, I, I've seen how beneficial it can be for, for the larger community. Are you closed on Sundays? All right, away. <laughs> open Sundays anymore. Church, but but oh, he will be. Oh. <laughs> so even though when that, I've been working at neighbourhood in the mornings and then go across to to try. Do we in this? Do, do you not want responses for questions, or are you? I thought that you were looking for answers. Um, yeah, so we're um, starting to engage from now. Um, formal consultation is planned for March and April. Um, hopefully, trying to link up with the consultation for the annual plan and the long term plan. Um, the policies will become effective from one July. Um, again, with some flexibility in those time frames. So, I mean, yes, if you have feedback now, I'm happy to to take it. Um, if you wanted to sort of come up with some feedback as a board, um, that's also suitable. Uh, whatever, whatever works. Are you chair? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's um. So those four policies are up for review. Um, that's great. 
So is um oh I lost just lost the track uh, line of thought. Um, we could <clears throat> so members of the public can get hold. Is is there anything on the website at the moment showing the policies that are up for renewal? Uh, that people could be directed. Sorry. Yeah, so um, this has been a real sort of program of work. I'm just starting to sort of pick up bits and pieces of it. Um, so I'll have to check where she's at in terms of that. Um, but there is a formal consultation process that we'll be going through. Um, so yes, it will be okay. well advertised, probably looking at March 8th okay. for that. So in that case, oh, I might just wait and then once that consultation period starts, I can put that out on the Yes, board. absolutely. That would be mm. encourage and invite um, input from members of the community. And if we can get those meetings back at running again somehow, yeah, yeah, can, yeah. that's the sort of thing we can engage with. Absolutely. For, yeah, that they've got a chance to face to face. Probably. And I think, oh, yeah. and, and sorry, that, that's the other thing that I did think that I lost my train of thought. Can, can this be included in, is it the community boards? Uh, What's been talked about now? A, a plan. The plan, a community plan, or something like that. That's yeah. been talked yeah. about to be brought into action. Would that yeah. be included in the, in the community board's plan. Uh, when are you wanting to adjust these policies? Is really the question. Mm -hmm. Are you asking us for um, information? Which is why I was saying we're asking for it now, or is there a time frame? Is there a yeah, so the informal engagement is now. So if anyone has feedback, you're welcome to submit it via email. We can have a chat. You're welcome to do it now at this meeting. A formal consultation, which follows a more specific process of how it wants to, you know, to proceed. Um, and that will be March and April. Okay. Around around these ones. Around these yeah. four policies, yes. Brilliant. So yeah. with respect to the buildings, the dangerous and insanitary buildings, <laughs> yeah. are there any that are identified in, Mar in Martinborough? I am not sure. Um, it may not be immediately obvious from the outside. No, I don't know. It's quite a few. Obviously, Featherston's the obvious one that's got lots of yeah. purely buildings, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We don't uh -huh. know. I don't know. What about, I don't know, what about perhaps just sending an email via that elected member's email address that's just come out and you could ask the question perhaps to Russell? To Russell, yeah, absolutely, we'll do that. Oh, okay. The report it one, no, I am. <laughs> I already did one. <laughs> I want to see how quickly it got answered. It hasn't been answered yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. It's like I went to Pino and I was looking at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, we've checked on everything. So <laughs> I need that information. Just yeah, and I mean, there's no pressure to provide any feedback on on all of them. If there's one that's a particular interest of the board, yep. um, or even just sharing this with community stakeholders, yep. would be would be helpful as well. So no um, pressure. Updating those policies, and then they won't have the the wrong logo on them. No. <laughs> But like the Constein Park user group would be one way you'd raise the dog policy. And that's them for feedback on it. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's how we can act here. That would be yeah. since we saw the dogs there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. It's like, I'm quite surprised. I know I was too. I was thinking, you don't know you've gone the council here, watch me. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know to get in my face. Like, oh no. Actually, that's the thing though, too, is, is, is could there be more fines? There is, but there isn't any sign. Yeah. What is your policy? Um, <laughs> and Stephen, you might be able to answer this. Um, yeah, having a having a couple of dogs. <laughs> um, no, no, but um, I was wondering if the council um, and because uh, Cheryl, I, I think it would be really beneficial, and I think nearly all homestays that are dog friendly would also use it. 
Um, if we could have a map that shows where all of the dog poo duty dip bins are. Yeah. Around the town, because people aren't 100% sure where to walk their dogs or where they are, and they're just using the normal bins and um, whatnot. But I think if we had a map that actually where, where you could say, this is where the doggy do bins are. See, them, I know that there is the one on Jellico Street and stuff, and um, but but a lot of people don't know that where, where they are. Yeah. So they're not necessarily disposing of it where they should. Um, so I, um, uh, I think it'll be fantastic for here, but it will actually be great for all three towns um, to be able to have it. So yeah, yeah. at the at the eyesight we hold, where the like, like I know we've got the map, so it's yeah. just kind of like just marking them on there, just and having it having it at the eyesight yeah. or whatever. We've got a little bit more information, camping ground, story to go of yeah. where you can walk, get little packages and stuff. Yeah. Certainly. Um, um, right. people, people building homes, all those kinds of things. It, it, it can literally just go in there so people have that information. And, um, and, and yeah, I'd love to see it. Really I know they're out there somewhere, but so far I've only been able to find two. Oh, really? Pinot Brothers, you around the corner. Oh, okay. My dog and Pinot Brothers. Oh, You're allowed you? to unleash. Yeah, You're allowed to unleash. Okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, no. No, he, yeah. he's, he's got a we arrange with counter. <laughs> the dog should find where they are. It's going to be strange. <laughs> we arrange your counter. Yeah, he's in the new footpath. All right, then we'll, we'll move on to the um, Payne Farm Lodged Insurance Claim for the original mm -hmm. carriage. Um, yeah. We have a mover to receive the Payne Farm Lodged Insurance Claim for original garage report. Yes. Thank you, Aidan. Um, do I have a second there? Thank you, Karen. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. Right. Sit in this. Okay. Um, the motion is carried. Um, is there anyone to speak to this report? Can an officer? I am quite concerned about this. Oh, oh. oh. no, no, no. Oh, sorry. Is it a about you? Just to speak. Please. Uh, so, um, just on behalf of the Munities team, um, uh, it's. Um, fairly uh, simple decision, I think, for the board. Um, the insurance company um, has produced an engineer's report that has found the garage uh, isn't worth repair. Um, but that would be um, extremely expensive to do, and that's if they, they, they don't consider that's the right course of action. But uh, they've put a sum on repairing it. Um, no, no, but it's basically, um, you know, you'd have to sort of take it apart and then really put it back together again in strength and strength. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the insurance companies informed us that, um, that is that's that's not their, their food course of action, really, and rather than we uh demolish the garage and um. It hadn't been a struck like like a really safe no. garage, and it hadn't been being used. And it wasn't yeah. being used. No. I've never seen it. And no, I mean, that's why no, I didn't go through the face of it. I think it's no. really not to get it fixed because yeah. otherwise you haven't got a garage. You get thirty no. grand. You can't build anything with thirty I mean, grand. Like no cars got here at the side. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the garage isn't completely <laughs> underneath the place. A tree. Yeah. This is why I suggested it was old. Once you see it, it was a different. Well, I haven't seen it. Yet. I just thought you're nutty not to get it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> nutty. thousand dollars for it. That's is it meaningless? That's the replacement value. Oh, well, let's replace it. I don't want to a garage. You've got thirty grand. You can't do anything with it. But I haven't seen it. Perhaps it's. How come it's still for over a hundred? I'll see if I can find a photo. Somewhere. Oh, no, we can go. I mean, on the face of it, I think you're nuts not to get it fixed. We haven't got a garage. People say, well, we've well, got rent because we've got no garage. You've lost an amenity. You've got 30 no. grand. What can you do with 30 grand? But I haven't seen it. No, no, and it, it wasn't. Uh, I'm sure the insurance company's got a line on it, but, you know, is it really the best thing to do? No, no. No, it's not worth it. It's not. Well, everyone's shaking their heads. <laughs> no, no. It's, I, the, the, quest, the, the question I had was just around the... Um, Money that pain farm that the pain, the pain estate has to pay out and where that is no brought back no That's no but sorry can you carry on with that oh so so um I was just wondering um because 
and saying the cost of the paying farm stay is 5000 in each bed. Yeah. But if there's any additional payout, that then comes straight back into the paying estate, doesn't it? So it's not a, a loss to the paying estate. Because there will be a payout for it, right? $1,000. No, no. Minus five. Yeah. You get 30 net if you pull it down. That's right, isn't it? That's yeah, right. 30, yeah. Well, 30, you know, well, 30 grand yeah. and you haven't got a garage. Yeah. So, I mean, so there would be that funding because I see that the, the pain of state is taking a loss. Yes, so, but I'd really like a breakdown on how that's possible where we're not charging enough because the pain of state should not be taking a loss every uh, year. So, so this for me, if there's 5,000 that's coming out of the paying time to as excess, you know, um, then then the additional money should go back through and then hopefully that helps to alleviate the loss that's showing in the expenditure, which I'm just a little bit confused on. And will the net from the insurance be put to one side towards the rebuild of the garage at a later stage? So it's identified, so it doesn't just cover the well, losses you know, that it's, it's made over the... Because $30,000 is not going to build oh. anything, is it? <laughs> no, it's a towards it. And well, then if we can establish to get some more money back in, well, one of the but things that the fencing, the fifty percent deposit remaining for fencing. Yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. If I could just just point out something here about the replacement structure garage seven point one one. They've got a non-exhaustive list of options there. Yeah, and for me, thing on that that actually looks like a replacement would be the carport with a concrete pad. Mm. But there's other trees all around the area. But the trees are coming out. Uh, all the trees coming out from there. So all the trees that would potentially fall on the... But, but then the other option is that why, why, is there, why would there be a need to reestablish a carport or a garage in the exact same location that the old one was? We could take the opportunity to, to move it up closer to the house because... Where it is at the moment is some distance away from the that, That's not even and, was not even used. And, and, a, and it wasn't being used as the garage for the purpose of a garage. And luckily, it wasn't being used for storage either. <laughs> well, one of the things that one of the things that I struggled with a little bit last time was that I had been wanting to take to see if we could use some of that for uh, the community garden right by where that car caught. Do you remember that? And we were saying yeah. about how the community garden so might be able, there might be sufficient storage and things for them to put um, the things that they had wanted to do um, on there, but we weren't allowed to. We weren't allowed to be leased out because yeah, uh, for the farm. But this oh, is it the farm site lease? Not the homestead. Mm, I can't recall. But yeah, there was a discussion. Yeah, that could have been a good option. Because, because nice option. Yeah, yeah, because we could be right. I think maybe that's that's what we it would be to look at getting a um uh, car. Uh, just it's just a standard car garage or whatever closer to the house. Do you is, think? There, is there anything about the house that puts it at the historic? It's not on the historic places list, no. but it's no. it's a character building. It's uh, a character building. I'm looking at the building still down the street. Yeah, and it's yeah, a significant amount of road history. So the question I'd ask is, 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 a, is a carport okay. in keeping, in keeping yeah. with the building? No, hmm. we're not. Today. Is that essential? It would be, ben it'll be beneficial towards... It's a big, it does have that big drive right up to the doorway, doesn't it? It'd be ben certainly to have a garage or a carport would be beneficial and add to the value of uh, of income I, I would be sourced. Do you think as as yeah. a um as a rental for rental property, you lose an amenity, don't you? Mm -hmm. You're losing an yeah an amenity or an asset or a structure. Which is advertised at the moment, for it without it. But no, I do apologise. I'm just going to have to take yeah. off. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. We'll just take a five minute yeah just break. Take a break. Thank you. Oh, just conscious that would. That's sorry.
do that. <laughs> yeah, it'll just rechange it itself now. Because, I mean, it is described as an attractive building. <laughs> I'm just reading it at face value. You take an attractive building, but then everyone says it's not attractive. It's bloody awful. It's not that it's run down. It. So it's, it's, it's actually and it was no maintenance. There was no had been no maintenance because the whole pain estate had it, been maintained under that had for the been last three years, um, or probably for the first two years of the three year triennium. Uh, the community would put a lot of time and effort into getting uh, the homestead and the cottage uh, up to tenable standard because it had been let go for so long and and the priority. that work was carried out and done and therefore in rental income was able to come back into the Marlinborough Community Board. Um, nothing had been done on that garage uh, to bring that up to standard because that wasn't a priority. And probably for the last 30 years, no maintenance has been done on that garage either. That garage, all the time. Because, because that garage just wasn't being used as, as a garage um, to store cars mm. or, or motorbikes or anything. It was just nothing. Uh, there was just the storage for garden refuse or old or pine cones or whatever. Yeah. So if it's unused, unloved, it has no utility. That's an argument. So I, I think the option of you know, something to replace it um, closer and more closer to the homestead and more functional is a good option. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so we'd need to ask for them to maybe assess where a potentially a better site could be for the... But I think, well, if, if we go to community board members yeah. are going to go and have a look, perhaps the, you know, a decision could be made now, yep. but then, you know, and then... The council aren't asking for a decision on what should actually replace this garage, well, but that can be the next step. But in the meantime, that's after that's this meeting, right. if everyone wants to go and have a visit, well, then they could have a look and see where would be the ideal place for a garage or a carport yeah. um, closer to the house to be more functional. Yeah, yeah. 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 the uh, tenants. Yeah, yeah, good idea. It's a good idea. But you guys did an awesome job at getting that pen estate. Driven back to because I went to the open day when they did the open day and it I mean it just looked there was a pride back in it it was nice yeah yeah, yeah. they did a good job they did a good job yeah yeah thank you oh. ready so so what we on the basis yeah. that it was useless we're going to vote to or I might have oh. to abstain yeah I accept insurance payout. So um, do I have a mover then to agree that the original pain farm garage be demolished and that an insurance payout in lieu of repair should be be accepted? I that. Aiden? Okay. Um, and to note that a decision on the replacement for the pain farm homestead garage will be made at a future meeting. Yep. Okay. So we made that decision. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll abstain because I don't really know what I'm voting for, but um, we'll be a majority. We don't, we don't all have to agree to it. No, no. 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 So, yeah, and you, and you are allowed to abstain. Broken down old yeah. garage. Uh, <laughs> um, strap yourself. I've never seen. <laughs> so, do, do, do I have a... Um, so, so Aiden, you, you've moved it? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. And do I have a second? I, um, thank you, Storm. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Um, and Karen, is it just that it's Yep. Alrighty. Then the motion is carried. Good. And then there's a note there that community board members will go and visit. Another visit. Yeah. 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 I'll talk that out another week as well. Yeah. Am I able yeah. to ask a question about the financial statement? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're just up to that. Sorry, actions, actions item. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, we've got this. Do we talk about the uh, pain farm? Yeah, no, no, income and expenditure. There's a pain farm um, expenditure statement mm -hmm. as part of the income and expenditure report as well. Um, that could be discussed there. 
or as part of this, I suppose, yeah, as part of the points, yeah. Yeah. But the head one, the, the rings, like just not. Um, mm -hmm. Um, just that overhead allocation, but that seems to be a whole topic of conversation, doesn't it? That's been going around the yes. for over three years. Sure it does. Um, what is it? Thank and, you. <laughs> uh, it's, I understand it is the fees that council charge Payne Estate for the management. Is that, and so there is the overhead patient and what's the other costs there as well but that that is very vague you know what are the overheads so um it's a i think it's been explained to us because and 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 i'm not and, and from my view we need to have more explanation mm -hmm. but the way i think it's been explained to us is that pain estate is class as a council asset and therefore the uh the time um, and the value of council staff providing the management uh, of the pain estate, um, the, uh, the doing those plans, um, engaging the consultant or the engineer for that sort of work about the um, garage, um, the council amenities offices doing the work with uh, the leasee farmer, the council amenities offices carrying out the management of the uh, tenancy agreements and that sort of thing, that all comes with a dollar value and that's set up and set again. Like property management. That's set against uh, paying estate accounts. On a monthly basis. However, yeah. however, that has been something that has been asked and discussed with and, um, the community board has been advised a number of times that that will be up for review at a different at different stages, whether it was the plan or a long-term plan previously, but still waiting for that work to be carried out. And hopefully it will be. And there is a whole sort of thing about it, isn't there, here somewhere? There is an item on the action item. Yeah, and the switch is going back. Is that action item? Well, that's, that's actually the next page, 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 page 63. Page 63, the action item. Oh, yeah, because if we leave the pain farm, we'll come back to that back in there, isn't it? Oh, as we go forward, because we'll come back to the oh, um, financial reports. Oh, okay. um, do I have a mover to receive the action items report? Page 68. Thank you, Storm. <laughs> do I have a seconder? Yeah. Thank you, Angela. Um, all those in favour, please raise your hand or say hi. Right. Right. And the motion is carried. Um, now, here we go. For quick, members, any questions or clarification that you would like to ask? Does anyone have any up? Open it to my So, uh, the, the discussion about um, the pain farm policy is action item 176. Definitely. So, you, you can see there that that takes the 19th of September 2019. And in the notes, and, and that refers back to the original state of the Payne Estate and uh, the community board at that time was looking at um, getting uh, work done and carried out. And then there goes further discussion about um, the cost, the reviews of cost, and the allocation model. And, uh, and the last update was on the 16th of the 6th, 2022. The pain farm policy will be reviewed in the next policy review and include a process for setting overhead costs. Which which doesn't actually answer the original no. query. Um, or, or talk to when the original query will be released. I mean, they should be able to do a breakdown of that sum, surely. Yeah. I mean, if there's been a consultant engaged, like i.e. an engineer or something, I mean, there would be a fee for that and some paper trail. It's quite a big sum to not have any back breakdown of it, isn't it? Is it not? $170 a week. Yeah. No, it's a lot of money. Well, I don't know what... 
Well, the, yeah, anyway, I don't know. No, no, you can see it. It's, it's a big. It's it's been mentioned before. So we guess that maybe they hired consultants to do, for example, look at the garage. But so where's the consultant's invoice? You know, uh, if that's the case, so everyone's yeah. guessing what that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's right. That's right. Exactly and I don't right. like sums that we're guessing what they are, and I don't so, see why we should. So have can't we go and ask it to be to, to be distributed in a different way so that we can see what's behind that figure? Oh, yeah. You're talking about again with the pain pain pain? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. You're talking about specifically under overhead allocation. Yeah. allocation. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else general. makes sense. How what like so so what does that what overhead. makes up what makes the percentage or how do they come to that amount? Eight thousand dollars. What there must there must be some thing somewhere. Yeah. Can we ask that question? Can we well, the I think, break down? I think I mean we'll probably ask I think we just probably need to keep asking for that whole review of the yeah. general expenses and the overhead cost allocation, because in and then and, and there's been discussion that it's going to be reviewed in the pain stage for the review. But we just need to keep, I think, rather than trying to break down individually and ask individual questions when that review comes through, I, I feel that that, 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 that will be time to ask them. all the questions. Yeah, of, and under actually understand it should be written what the process is. Mm. I guess it should be written against this. <laughs> but did, if did, you look, did you come out on the sixteenth of the sixth that that the date did not occur. No, didn't occur. No. Whose who's responsibility is that? Does it go back to council or is it? Yeah, that's else? what it's saying. That's what they've said. Yeah. Is that the, so I guess we need to reiterate that request for that yeah. report. Has it, do we know if it's been done or is it just not published? Is it the pain, pain firm, firm policy reviewed? So the pain firm policy has not been reviewed. Um, we have policies that are under review currently because they require um, to be reviewed within certain time frames to meet legislation. So those obviously need to take priority. Um, our policy and governance advisor also um, has moved on um, to a role in central government. So I don't know where that is on the program. Yeah. Would we be able to find out by the next meeting? Yeah, no, no, by the next meeting, so would we have an idea of when that might so be done? What is it exactly that you're asking against that action um, or a time frame and for the review of the um, plan policy? But then that will be quite vague, won't it? I mean, this is very specific, this expenditure schedule. It actually has consultants as an item, but there's nothing against it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, but, but maybe they didn't use consultants, wouldn't it be? Yeah, it might have been internal. Sure. Well, yeah. I think what that figure's for. No, I understand, but yeah. if it was an insurance assessor, they would do that with any insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Insurance, yeah. the, the insurance, yeah. policy, insurance assessor has used their own engineers to do the assessment. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, can I just, can I just yeah. check with Stefan? Did you have some um, information on that? Previous year. Um, yeah. Look, in, while we're waiting, for the pain fund policy to get to the top of the policy review process because of a lot of policies now. Perhaps I could um, try and work with finance and my team to provide you with a, a breakdown. It might just be a rough breakdown, but a breakdown of what you're paying for mm -hmm. in terms of the management costs. And I'll include the things that um, are listed here in terms of governance, secretarial duties, financial accounts, supervision, and native. Um, I have most of the time with residential accommodation, review station and bar. And also, um, if one of the members has mentioned any use of uh, external consultants, because there's, there's likely to be a few yeah. in terms of um, you know, any building inspectors we've used for the garage and or a property management company for for um for the property. I don't know if we've used any for the fencing, that kind of thing. So if it would if it would be helpful, I could have a go at breaking down the you know what you're paying for and in that corporate support cost. Yeah, that would be great. Um, mm. And try and bring it back to you for your next meeting. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Any information will be better than no, no information. Yeah. And the personnel cost too. I mean, who yeah. are these people? The personnel cost. Personnel. 
personnel, yes. Personal. Mm. With the amenities. People with my team, really, that are, that are okay. administering property. Um, okay. Managing so it just seems, anyway, it'd be interesting to break down. It seems to be that $13,000 is quite a lot to get $25,000 yeah. a year. Let me break it down for you. And you can yeah, good. Up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Okay. Right. That's fantastic. One seven six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready. Mm -hmm. Um, just regarding the the Martin Barrett Creek Group. Um. Check that with Michael. Yeah, I think it, when I spoke, I spoke to him, he said he was happy to still carry on. Still carry on, with yeah. Me. But I'll check. I'll check and see. Oh, because Chris. Um, yeah, it's just maybe. I mean, the Martin Retreat Group doesn't necessarily have to be. Well, they. That's that name. So Mike wants to if he's willing to lead each group. And we did go back to the Uh, did, did we just still need to check with them? We hear back from the Marlborough Community Garden about their, uh, their monies. I, I know people at the Community Garden, I know quite a few of the people who, who do work with that. I know that we're, yeah. then that we're still quite interested in trying to find some, some land. I know about that yes. part of it, but that was something that is. That's one of the things that we've still um, yeah. been looking at, and what, what we're going to look at, at doing is seeing if, if there's any any land, I guess, that we that you can think of. Yeah, to get land up. Yeah. So I know she said that people had been around, which is obviously in there. But that there was very little council owned land, but yeah. I wondered about just places like the dog park, you know, like that off flesh dog park on Ferry Road. Mm. Um, if there was, you know, a portion of land that could be put aside for that, because the community garden is all immovable. Yeah, it's all in the beds. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, because they don't own the land that they're on. No. So they're very... Uh, but it's concerned that if they do get They're currently it. under the goodwill of, of a person, and if it's that person fails or anything, yeah. then, yeah, yeah the community, that could lose the community garden. Yeah. If um, I recall, I believe Stefan um, spent some time looking at mm. some potential council-owned land for use of the Martinborough Community Garden, um, and I don't believe that there was any that was made available. I'm not sure mm. if there's been any progress since then. Stefan? There been no, no, because because I think didn't um, wasn't the mayor that said that. Um, Solution for well. uh, we, we scoured the public land um, that we had available on, on GIS, sort of enlisted not the knowledge of people in the council who, 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 who know who it is, uh, and, and couldn't find a suit um, location for, for a community car. And we reported that back to the committee the last, I think the last maybe on the meeting before. Because, but because, but was, was any of the um, land looked at, at the, the um, at the dog park, the off leash dog park, at the Fury Road end, or at one of the other, um, what's Well Street yeah. Um, yeah, well, end, whether there would be a portion? Did we consider using the dog yeah, park? Because was still part, part of it, a portion, like just a small. But we didn't, we didn't consider using existing facilities. Yeah, you know, like a zoo or a park or the golf course as a community garden. 
Okay, so the lands adjacent to the golf haven't been looked at either. There's, oh, there's some land go. at the golf. You looked at land that was being, wasn't currently being used. I know they were concerned that if it was somewhere that was like, because someone had talked about where the um, Cecilia Martin. Yeah, yeah, that, that's not a problem. And they said it, it also it, where they are is actually still a little bit covered over. Right, so that, people can't just, I mean, they don't have a problem with people taking the food, but if it becomes vandalized it's or. It's not just, the food, it's the. the it's all the, the other food, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so somewhere like the community camp, uh, dog park areas and things probably won't work. Mm -hmm. But above. Golf but a, but, but, have a little but, bit of that. Yeah, because it's if on the golf course does have some um land um uh council land so sort of some some land on its release. Is that right? That's still available? The whole area of council land. Yeah. 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 The, the, the no, no, that's not under the lease. As, as, as you enter on the right hand side. Yeah. It's not yeah. Not I don't know. I wonder if it would be worth discussing. But you just got to be careful where the Martin Bay residential stops and the council land starts. I don't know quite where there's a deep where, where they um, are just uh, the Martin Bay state. So they've got land that sort of creeps on. Creeps onto it a little bit. Oh, oh, they they don't, don't don't a little bit onto the golf okay, yeah. right, yeah. no, no, Well, they go onto the. The part of the golf course was not used. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure they'd rather have the community garden there than all the caravans. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the ownership must be defined at some point, even if people are informally using it. Well, there, there has to be, a, there there has to be must be some sort lead. of definition, but I don't, know yeah. if, I don't know if there's any boundary pegs. Yeah. No, but you can soon get it surveyed. Well, was that the type of, was lead? Uh, was that a possible um, I, can, I can go back and investigate this again. Mm -hmm. I guess I've got a question. Um, how do you intend to set your priorities for the year? Like you've, you've just come together as a new team, mm -hmm. and it's, you've, got a, you've got a new year in, uh, in front of you. Um, we're, we're nearly at Christmas. <laughs> um, and how how are you going to determine where to have an impact and where to spend your energy. And I guess when, you know, when things like this come up and there's a lot of, sort of to me it appears a, a little bit fragmented, but there's a lot of things come up that you want to explore and investigate and research. Some of it seems really strong, like the lighting in the um, square, that seems like something that the, we know the community really wants. It's a long-standing issue. Um, there's some research behind that, you know, but some of it, like the gardens, how do, how do we know that this is that this is a priority for you that you really want to push and that the community is behind it? And, do you know what community I mean? Community garden provides fresh vegetables straight into the yeah. paint. Oh, no, I know, I know. So the, so the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, how do I know what you were? Are you going to make any attempt to to um, set your priority priorities for the year and and? as a team and you sort of pursue certain things over others or is it just going to be is, whatever comes up? Is, is there a way that we can have an idea of what council's priorities are and where we can be putting... But that's, not, that's not what I'm asking with respect, Chair. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm asking. The council's priorities are in the annual plan and the long-term plan and, yeah. and available yeah, public public public. for anyone who wants to, to, to read, them. read them. What I'm asking is representing this community mm -hmm. How do you intend in uh, prioritising your effort? I don't think any of these issues would be in a document like this if they weren't a concern. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, we don't pluck things out of the air. I mean, they've come and been considered, some of them, for years. Mm. And I think that's a big thing is that, like with the, um, the community garden, with the huge... Um, cost of um, living increases mm -hmm. with the numbers of families we all yep. know it's very virtually struggling it's very at living here in Martin Borough, um, something like the community garden gives I, I a only huge answer, I only answer to you because there's been um, you know some conversations um, with the other community boards uh, on uh, you know where we've we've issued information and we've talked about the possibility of of, of, our, of the boards um, consulting and writing a community plan. Yeah. yeah. That, that, yeah. that is a vehicle for 
canvassing the views of your community and potentially having a plan that would allow prioritisation on certain things through through the year. I was just curious to know whether that was an approach that would find favour with you, yep. uh, or whether you would be just receiving uh, and then making decisions on the things, different things that you receive as a team. Okay. So, so I think I think the big thing is that we we will be setting our priorities and doing the same plans as, as everybody know, else. Yeah, that's what I understand. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. something that we're supported by council to do. Um, that's right. Should you guys help, like, so we're supported by council to write a community plan? We've been asked to um, yeah. could maybe set up some time to um, discuss sort of what that process might look like. We had a meeting yeah, this yeah. week um, and met with some of the community boards um, and sort of had a bit of a conversation around what is a community plan? How could that look? Oh, yeah. um, there was a lot of talk about time management and mm -hmm. how you know, you only have a certain amount of time. And so how can you best use your time to advocate for the community? And is it sort of picking up bits and pieces that you hear from one member of the community? Or is it sort of engaging with the community as a whole and then prioritizing yeah. some items? And very well, the community garden might be top on the priority list, but then you can give some direction to us in terms of okay, what do you need to look at that, whether it's a submission to the annual plan or the long-term plan to prioritize funding for the development of a community garden, whether it's looking for some potential locations and exploring avenues that we haven't already explored. But then that gives us as officers some direction in terms of what the priorities of the community are. Um, and it's not sort of us chasing up little bits yeah, and pieces absolutely. and then giving the answers that you're seeking yeah. but then sort of jumping to something else and then finding more answers it just gives a bit more of a holistic approach and how we can all sort of work together to meet the needs yeah. of the community yeah I get that because because so, I didn't understand um like with the community garden things just to take an example yeah. how much work that would put on you because I was thinking it was a member of the community board who goes out and finds it that's so, quite, you, very you know, which, yeah. And, and, and I guess what, that's what I'm getting at. Should I be looking at exploring a variation to a lease agreement to, mm -hmm. to accommodate land which, or a yeah. community garden with an, with an existing lease that I have with, with someone? Or is it because that could be quite Hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, you know, what I need to know is what that a good use of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you putting on, on the things which yeah, yeah. are being asked to council? Yeah, yeah, totally. I think, I think the thing to remember is that the, the community garden, if you like, isn't which is still not the priority, but the, no. the land, finding them a place yeah. that they could be permanent. Well, just at least. Yeah, they keep regarding. They can always be moved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think the idea of um, a community, a community plan for the community, yeah. is great. It's certainly something yeah. we haven't had in the last triennium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, like Stefan, like Katie have said, it'd be great to define and set those priorities. Yeah. There's a lot of <clears throat> the last three years, and even even in the last two months, there's been a lot of emails going from elected members to council officers asking questions and queries about a number of different things, and that all takes time mm. out of the uh, day for the council officers to yeah. uh, reply back and, and do a bit of research and answer those emails. I think as a new member, I don't want to, I, I, when you come into it, you think you want to clear up things that are existing because you want to be tidy. You want to say, okay, where did this get to? Do we need to continue this? And it might be we make a decision that actually we've exhausted it for the time being. Yeah. Community can don't need to move just now. That might Maybe we pack it. That's it. That would be yeah. the question to ask. Yeah. And I don't know whether there's an avenue within that community plan, but perhaps there might be that you reassess the action plans of the previous triennium and you know, you know, yeah. reassess do these have these been thrashed to death? Yeah. If they are, uh, or if they have been, should we just move on from there and to start? Yeah. Something, yeah, exactly. yeah, something yeah. like that. I think we all agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Because there is there's a, there are a number of, oh, of competing issues. Yeah, exactly. Um, within the town, so it's good to, it's it's good to get that. Yeah, and work out, you know, what's yeah. the best use of everyone's time. 
see the cost when it comes to council time. Well, I think it's it's good for us to have a prioritisation. Yeah, totally. It does exactly what we want, and then anything else that comes, yeah, comes yeah, comes in. Yeah, we'll probably fit within that anyway. Yeah, totally. Okay, and totally. So it's worth yeah, it. No, that's good. So, so in terms of the community plan, is there a plan to do it? I mean, what it's a bit vague now too, isn't it? So there's some guidelines and talk, but... Well, I'm just wondering as to whether... Why don't um, I look at setting up a workshop um, and then we can sort of talk through the process uh, with Amanda um, and maybe Stefan, if you wanted to be part of it as well, we can sort of work through what that process might look like um, and how we can support you in the development of that plan. Um, and then some of the vehicles you can use to move your priorities forward um, through submissions and and those types of things. So have is it Featherston that's already got one? Has Featherston got a plan or somebody's got one? Great. In the past Not three years, community board has done um, a brief community plan. Yeah. Um, but I think that we're looking at sort of a larger a little bit community more. plan yeah. that's a little bit more formal um, and is actually developed from some conversations in the community. Yeah. Um, and so I think we're moving towards something a little bit different this year if that's something that you would like to be a part of. Has the council got a template of those sort of things? Yeah, so we will yeah. be drafting something. Um, I think probably the governance team along with the communications team will mm -hmm. be able to put together um, a template and maybe some guidelines around what that process will look like. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to have a workshop, a template to go into that would be very good. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I'll add that as an action for myself um, and we'll schedule something for... In the can I ask that there's not yeah. too much jargon involved? I'll do my best. <laughs> jargon away. <laughs> That's my inner thing. Uh, so I can't do anything in English. All right. Well, so, look, you see, you see, it's got all these different things yeah. around the lighting yeah, and the street the the lighting. Is, um, could, could we park these until the formulation of our plan? Or? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, we can we can leave them for tonight and come back to them. And, um, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just leave them as it is, um, and, and then we can yeah. reevaluate them, or maybe look at them as part of that workshop as well. Yeah, yeah. That would be really yeah. good. That would be really, really, really good. good. Number of things that go we with them, like that way they fit in. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Oh, perfect. oh I didn't actually realise there was another page of them. But obviously, some of them have more yeah. priority than others. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, point taken. All right. So now, now we can put the income and expenditure report. Mm. Um, so do I have a mover to receive the income and expenditure report from the period ending 31 October 2022? I'll move that. Thank you, Aidan. And do I have a second? Second. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, all those in favour, please. All right. All right. Thank you. The motion is carried. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't see the plan farm income and expenditure for the period in thirty September. I'll move that. Well, let's we'll do them together. Yeah, okay, thank you. I think that's now. now um, members, do you have any questions? So this is probably covered as well by around some of those getting to see those trading points. Uh, well, that's much more straightforward in this schedule, though, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with how oh, that's presented. Um, okay. We asked the community garden about the eight hundred dollars because that was from twenty twenty. Is it still in the committed funds? Yeah. Um, I did follow up at one point, although it probably was quite a while ago. Um, I will do that again uh, and get back to you. Um, Lee is the best person. I'm not sure if she's on technically, but... Okay. Lee, I'll reach out to you. Um, I think she was the right the person who originally came through to us. Okay. Back in 2020. <laughs> 
So where it says management community, that's community yeah. garden. It's just got all oh, garden oh, bits. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So they they originally came to us um, with eight hundred dollars going towards their um, just seeds and plantings and yeah. um, years and things. So yeah, oh. it's not. And then they didn't. But then they didn't. And then, down. Down. then they didn't. <laughs> down. So yeah. So that's why that's there because of. They may so because they'll be fundraised for them and get them some money. So maybe they didn't need it after we got fundraised. That's right. And if they don't, then it should come back and they the should just let us know they don't need it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can any group, uh, sort of worthy group, come and apply for funding to the board? Yeah. 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 And is there any guidelines as to what criteria might be for? Um, so there's a. Yeah. No, um, see that outlines the criteria um, in which a community organisation can apply. Um, document. I believe yeah. the Martin Borough Community Board has typically considered grants um, twice a year, yeah. um, and those funding rounds are posted on the website. Um, so typically, there will be sort of an influx of grants to those two funding rounds. Right. Okay. Um, and they all um, are assessed to the criteria that's laid down. In that that's laid out as part of the policy. Yep. Yeah. 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 So there are some applications for financial assistance that are in um, this agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, the funding round dates for the year weren't, for 2023, weren't set yet. Um, so yeah. we just included them for consideration. Oh, which is good because it's quite often those ones that fall down in the gaps in between. Yes, I think. Um, through you, Chair, um, just taking a step back to the uh, action items, oh. we did ask... Um, in our last community board meeting on the last triennium, that the incoming, the new members or the new community board um, be updated on the available grant funds. And because um, there's quite a few grants or, or funds that Marnborough Community Board can access. And, um, and so we had requested that uh, you get um, a bit of an induction and an idea as to what those funding sources are. And it'll yeah. be timely now that we've got some new members on the mm -hmm. community board and it's up and running and we're considering grants. So we've got the swimming pool fund, the pain farm fund, beautification fund and the stand fund as well. Absolutely. Um, so I can just give a quick rundown of, of those different gifts now. Um, and if it if it's suitable, I can incorporate a little bit um, into that workshop just in terms of yep. a little bit more um, and send out the policies for the different funds as well um, so that you can sort of begin to understand what that looks like. Um, so the Martinburg Community Board has um, a few different funds. Um, so all of the community boards have um, an allocated grant fund as well as an allocated beautification fund. Um, I think we're hoping to look at that fund more as a community well-being fund or something along those lines, um, but that's sort of in pro process. Um, the other fund that's unique to the Martinborough Community Board would be the swimming pool fund. Uh, my understanding is that that fund was... Um, given to the yes. Martinborough Community Board um, when the swim club in Martinborough closed. Mm -hmm. um, so there are funds available there that are specifically to be used for swimming activities yep. um, in Martinborough. Um, last year, the Martinborough Community Board funded a life-saving swimming lesson for each of the students at Martinborough oh, so awesome. through that fund. So there's some neat opportunity there to use that fund for um, Swimming specific activities. Um, the other fund is the Pain Farm Fund, um, which we are currently in the process of looking at. There is um, some grant opportunity low within that Pain Farm Fund, um, but we'll we'll get back to you on on that and what that could potentially look like. Just need a little more time on on that. Yes. Cool. Cool. But yeah, because that is the one thing, because even though that says grants, that this actually covers as well the types of grants. Is it, it all together in the committee funds there? Oh, I think it so. usually is split out. So it's um, 15,268 in the swimming pool club and the swimming funds. Yep. Yeah, swimming. Um, so page 71. 
grants. Beautification fund, 23,900. Beautification, yeah. and then grants is on the other yeah. side there. Yeah. Oh. So do they get added to those sums or are they, the swimming pool fund won't because that was from the... Right, so some of them are a one-off, like the swimming pool fund. Um, unfortunately, once those funds have been allocated, there are no more. Um, the other funds are um, allocated through the long-term plan. Okay. Um, and so those will be reviewed, um, but there is an annual sum that goes um, uh -huh. towards those allocations. Just, just maybe me, but some of the on page 70 doesn't add up in the numbers. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, what's that? Seven and a half thousand. What's one thousand? The numbers don't add up to the final sum we've got of 23,929. For what, um, what grant is it? Sorry. This is under the community board, the beautification. Oh, so that, that's separated, is it? Yes, I think so. Isn't it? I'm not sure. I don't know. I should put a total income. You've got total that's committed for the minor. Is it the it's summation of these numbers here? Or is it so something? at the top, it's the um, annual, annual plan allocation. Yep. Um, and then down below, there is $1,000 has yep. been um, So that hasn't been up, uplifted yet. Um, and then it would be the balance carried forward from the previous financial year. Uh, so 23,000 should be the sum of 13,000 plus 11,000 oh, minus 1,000. Oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 but we're just we're just affecting it. Because then that one um, oh. then the next one on is the pay farm. Pay farm one again. I'm asking about that, the pay farm. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Um yeah, so that's good if it's gonna go. Oh, that's it. Yeah. It does it does save a lot of money to collect twenty five thousand. That's what anyway, there we are. Oh. Yeah, in this particular one, it's yeah, you're right. But, yeah. but I assume yeah. that income cap would be in a whole year's rent if it's unless it's gone up considerably because it's 650 a week now and that's not 25,000. No, it's uh, it should be a bit more than that, shouldn't it? Yeah, so yeah. 25,500. Yeah, so it's going to be different. Uh, yeah, but maybe it won't a whole year or something. Yes. Yeah, so, period ending 30th of September. So oh. you'd assume that to be a year, wouldn't you? I don't know. We're very old if it wasn't. It might not have started at the start. No, no, it won't be. It'll be for the financial. <laughs> I think Stefan undertook. Um, it's opening balance is one July. It would be one July. It should be for the financial. It would be year. a year, wouldn't it? Ending 30th of September. Um, so that would be. That it could have been. Quarter. Quarter. In the 30th of September. Could have been empty for a bit. Oh, so is that not for a whole year? Well, it hasn't been empty the whole time. No, it's a funny amount if you divide it by 50. <laughs> so it's 420 of dollars, that's really. Yeah, but, but now it's... But taking into consideration the farm as well, which is... Yeah, so it's just, I mean, it's an old oh, amount. Oh, the farm and the, and the house. And the house, yeah. and then there's a cottage as well. Yeah, and there's a cottage. So there's three, these three income streams, but they're all probably all... Come the same farm. Combined just under. But actually, it would be income. separate for them. Oh, it's only $25,000 a year round for this. Well, all of that. But there has been some, there has been costs going out. Yeah, but this is rent received. Income. Right. Income. Yeah, no, no. So 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 the that rent received isn't for the year. Oh. That twenty five thousand. It does say it's shown as information sensitive as the tenants could be included in the public excluded reports requested. Oh, so it's only for a part period of it all. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a very weird sort of financial thing to be given, isn't it? That's I'm not sure. I can ask the finance team. Um, yeah, that's not my. Is that definitely wrong then for the then, um, amount of income? Yeah. So it would just be for the period, probably for the first of July to the thirtieth of September. Yeah. Once again, what are we guessing? Oh, first of July. It does say opening balance. Yeah, but that's accumulated funds. But it's sort of the financial performance. We probably just need. Okay. Oh, we could yeah, break it down so we understand. We, we could probably just ask some questions, probably offline, and we, you know, just yeah, moving, to, just to, yeah. moving What what period does it actually yeah. go, and what's the breakdown between the three entities? Would be useful. We could just um, got the farm because it's a proportionality rather than a um, yeah, I think direct amounts if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah. Oh. 
So it's protecting their privacy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are we up to grants? Yeah, so we're now up to other angels. There are no tenants. People. Right. So um, do I have a mover to receive the financial assistance report? Yes. Thank you, Aidan. And do I have a second? <laughs> um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Um, members, any questions? I think we'll just ask the question to get a bit more detail. Um, oh, I mean, I kind of mean to the actual. So these applications, these applications have come in outside. Well, we haven't we set the funding round dates for the new triennium. Mm -hmm. Um, so these did come in between the last board meeting and um and, and this meeting. So one of the recommendations would be to set the funding round dates for 2023. Um, I'm not sure if you still would like to consider grants on a twice yearly basis or quarterly. Um, some community boards consider grants at each meeting. Um, so that's really up to the board to decide. Um, but as these ones sort of came out of any cycle, um, we brought them forward for consideration. Um, and then moving forward, we'll be back to the grant cycle that you choose. So previously, the grant cycle was, was this um, once a year. So I yeah, yeah. So, so can okay. you recall when it says August and February? Yeah, August and February. Yep, yeah. February. Yeah. What's the deadline? Um. So. So there's just these two to be looked at today, tonight. Yeah. yeah. The netball club. Um, so did you find twice a year waits well during the August and February, or is quarterly easier for the ones that slip through the net if we do do it twice a year? Would there be less to consider in a... We were always able to take them in... In between, anyway. ...ones, weren't we? Were yeah. Sort of yeah, so any out-of-cycle grant applications... Um, would go through the chairperson. Yeah. Um, so at the chair discretion, they could be added if there was a reason why they couldn't wait for the next funding round. So there's no reason not to stick to August and February. I, I think certainly no. I, I I think that worked really well breaking it up in yep. half. However, just looking at these applications, one applicate well the netball club application. I, I think I'm wondering as to whether we can half portion half half the grant funding. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering as to whether we can perhaps that until February. Um, but the uh, the application from Charlotte. Yeah. Or, um, oh, Christmas. I'm like wondering as to whether we consider that tonight. Not yeah, to for Christmas, can we? No, no, that's right. With the real bridge. I actually, I actually agree with that because I'm just wondering. When do the netball team, netball people need it for that? Well, well they're, they're saying that they're looking for three thousand dollars under half of the total cost for the uniform. Um, I'm saying that. Training, but I yeah I, I when I looked at when I like said you know there's a lot we don't know from the application it's because we don't know if they've got funding if they've, if they've funded the rest of it how they funded it if it's fundraising how many children are going to get uniforms from it is other hoodies essentials if we're just trying to play sport you know there's lots around it and it did seem like a large amount to be asking for yeah 
So I, I, I personally have no problem with, with, with funding some of the netball, but I thought $3,000 in the scheme of things was a big ask. Yeah. Well, it is not... designed to, to be uniforms for the junior players and to subsidise. And the, yeah, and the uniforms do have, have sponsors' names down the side of them currently. So, like, you know, it's just Susan Stevens' reality and other bits and oh, pieces. So, got so, so they do actually on have the current ones. That was one of the questions I would have liked to have been able to ask if they'd have been yeah. here. Do you have sponsorships on your uniform? Because if you do, yeah, we, we probably really, it's a different funding. Yeah. I believe, you know, so, so it's the information we don't know from this, whether we... Could we, could we perhaps defer and, and put this back to, to February community board meeting? Yes. Yeah. Where our six, you know, if we, if you want to go and carry on that six monthly grant funding process, mm -hmm. but also ask them, are we going to defer it to them and ask them if they'd like to come along to speak, speak in, in support of their yeah. Yeah. funding yeah. application? Yeah. Um, and, Those questions. And, and, if, and if you've got questions now, well, then perhaps you could, um, I, I, I don't know whether this is feasible, whether we could put some of those questions to them. Uh, when we communicate with them and, and so that they know and have some answers and some information prepared yeah. to come back. Yeah. yeah. That can yeah. be in a timely manner for the yeah. bond as well. Yeah. 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 Look, um, is everybody happy then to, to for February and August? Yes. Yep. They said they, they did the work. Well. Yep. Um, they did well. Yeah. Before that, you know, I think all the community boards were working on um, just as they appeared, but ones like this pop up and they ask for everything. Yeah, and, 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 and it could clear you out and there's nothing yeah. to ask here. So yeah. that's why we moved. If, if you've got a few together, yeah, you can actually compare and work out where the money's going to go. Yeah. We're, we're going to be postponed for one meeting. Yeah. Yeah, February. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. Definitely think we'll do that. Yeah. So do we need to make a resolution to defer this one? Um, yeah, you can just do it as, as part of this. So um, you can so, um, so everyone from, oh, receive okay. the financial assistance report, um, defer the application from the Martinborough Netball Club to yes. support junior uniforms, um, and request that they come to speak at the February funding round, yeah. Um, yeah. and then decide um, about the yes. Christmas event, yeah. um, and then uh, set funding round dates for the Martin Brewer Community Board for um, February and August of 2023. Thank you. So how do we communicate that? I, I will do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'll reach out um, and ask that they come to speak at that meeting um, and let them know that you've just deferred it to uh, the February program. Yeah. Um, so um, what's Charlotte's? Um, the holiday event in Martinborough, I think, certainly. Would, would uh, two of you able to get to give us a bit of a rundown? Yeah, what, what's going to happen? Yeah. Um, it was just a, it, we we got together because we 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 wanted to go try and make the Christmas parade happen, but it wasn't going to happen because of the it was too difficult with the roading plans in the period of time we we still had left. So the outcome was Charlotte was already working with the business association through the tenth and eleventh of December was Martinborough's Christmas. Um, which is she's, she's doing um matter of business association have got special events on they've got decorating the windows they've got the big tree that just went up in the square today with all the baubles on it which is outside the um wine merchants so they've put a big effort into getting this creating it over a two-day period That's as nice. things happening and then on the day um what Sam and i discussed with her was moving it into the square in Martinborough to tie in with Christmas carols at six o'clock um there's going to be a decorate your kids bikes competition there's going to be face painting, there's a bubble machine, there's a DJ coming on. So just lots of family fun activities. Um, and she said it'd be cool if the community board, at least a couple of us went along and was judges just to be be engaged with the community and be part of it as well, which was quite cool. Um, because that's one of the things I found with her application is that yeah. she's actually is not just asking us for money. She's <laughs> no, no, like, <laughs> no, she's literally she's asking us to, to put it for some time. Yeah. And um yeah. And I really Which is great. Appreciate it. It's it is yeah. nice. It's nice to feel included into it. Yeah. And we talked as well with um Shane from Madcaps yeah. about starting a a a group that's 
committed to making the Christmas parade happen next year, yeah. that we'll have a first meeting and we said maybe March. April, March, April, yeah. and we'll see like the business association, probably some it's from the yeah, yeah. board and get just people together who have got connection with it. Mad Cats would be there as well. So Great. make sure it happens next year in a different format. If it's what everybody wants, which we assume. One of the things we did put it yeah. in the uh, it's like we did yeah. very prevalent on the year, yeah. and that we thought was a good full match to run for yeah. the kids. And it's good for the kids that all get yeah. move and yeah. being safe on the crossings and mum and dad taking them into the square. So, yeah. yeah What's the date for it again? I know that. I mean, I'm... I'm 10th of December. 10th of December, yeah. yeah. So for myself, I definitely would be um, happy to, yeah, support the $150. So um, do I have a mover then to... Um, Request that Martinborough Netball Club um, come to speak to us in the next official grant funding round, which is in February um, meeting, and that we fund Charlotte Harding to support a holiday event in Martinborough through the grant fund. Tune of $150. For $150. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Adam, and um, thank you for seconding me. All in favour. All, All those in favour? Yeah, yeah, thank you. The mic can get you. Yeah. Okay, so this is the last thing for the evening. Now move on to item 8.8 .8, election of a new chair of the Master community. Oh, we've run out of time. We've got so we'll have a. <laughs> do, do I have a, a mover to receive the election of the chair of the community board? 22 to 25 Geranium report and um yes I'll move yes, that yes thank you very much Aidan um um and all those in favor I now do I have a mover then to adopt system A is outlined in clause 25 of Schedule 7 of the Local Government Act 2002 <laughs> for the election of the board <laughs> chair and deputy chair if required for the 2022-25 biennium. Some A. Oh, the May is the typical voting yeah. um, so and that system. Yeah. B is a little bit different. Um, but they're both aligned the there. They're yeah. involved. Yeah. Yep, system in. Okay, thank you, Angela. And do I have a second now? Yep. Oh, um, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Great, motion is carried. Um, do we have any nominations for the position of chair of the Martinborough Community Board for the 2022 25 triennium? Hang on, so we all go really quiet. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I just um, I nominate you. And, uh, I'd like to nominate Storm as my deputy um, chief to move up. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. 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 Happy to do that. How we do it? Yeah. Do it? Yeah. Uh, all those who played on. She just said, "Do it." Need to do it. <laughs> Am I allowed to do it? Being yeah. the ones. Yeah. You'll nominate Storm, I'll and then you just need a seconder. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah. Oh, and both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone's in favor. Yes. yes. Okay. In favor. Now so you're going to need to elect a deputy chair because Storm was your deputy chair. Mm -hmm. I can't be both. Yeah. No. So no. no, no. no. <laughs> Can I nominate Angela? Yeah, we have Angela. I'm not going to wait for Storm. Okay. Yeah. Take a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. Well, then yeah. the motion is carried. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you very, very much. <laughs> and I'll... Still thinking of it in six months' time. I would still absolutely um, want to help. Yeah, of course you are. And, I'd, and, and through you, Chair, yeah. I would just like to, um, on behalf of myself, um, the community board and the whole community, thank you for the last three years that you have held and, and carried the role of chair of the Martinborough Community Board. Um, it's uh, been a bit, no doubt, been a big task, and I know because I, in the past I've stepped up when you have been unable to chair some meetings. Um, and 
um, deputised for you. So yeah, it has been a big role, um, and you've done it really, really well. And um, and you know you've got those, you know, you've got great contacts and networks within the community, which have been um, which you've utilised. Uh, for the benefit of the community board and the community as a whole. So thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much, Aidan. That's awesome. It's awesome. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks, Sheila Stuffield. Yep, indeed. And we won't be we won't be chair and deputy unless you whistle around. <laughs> we need you. Thank you so much. I now declare that the meeting is closed. Thank you. Um,